about you again. You're in your 50s. Right. I'm uh, 55, Pete. And in January, January 12th, I will be 56 years old, and I can't even imagine it. Yeah, you're on your way up to uh, close to Ronnie's age. He's going to be 60. And it's well, let's not rush me up to 60 yet. But uh, Yeah, it takes a couple of years to get there. Yeah, still. give me a break. He has a full uh, term of college before he's 60. <laughs> right. It's a you lifetime. Know, I'm 30 years old now, so you're 50. I mean, you're 56. Five. So what is it like in your 50s? That's what I want to know. Like, Are you enjoying your life still? You know, Pete, I am enjoying my life from the sense that uh, I'm very, very happily married. I enjoy my weekends and time off, and I'm enjoying work more than ever. So it's a great place to be. My kids are older, which is kind of nice. They're doing well. You know, I'm happy to see that. You know, I'm out of the woods in the sense that, you know, you wonder when you have kids, gee, are they going to grow up to be good kids? Are they going to be normal? Are they going to give you a hard time? Yeah, what kind of adults are these going to be? So I feel out of the woods. I, I think they're good kids. They're nice kids. And uh, I love them. And and the thing is, so that's that's a good place to be. I'm, I'm I wouldn't want to go back into my 30s or 20s and start over professionally. I like where I'm at in terms of a radio performer. I know how to get behind a mic and do a show and all of that. So all that's good. Listen, I came to a conclusion a long time ago about radio specifically that the person who doesn't grow or change is dull and remains dull and will never, ever succeed. You constantly have to evolve and change. And I don't mean just from, like, whether or not you played the dating game on the air. I mean your your whole lifestyle, your opinions, your view of the world has to evolve or else it's it's a dead it's issue a you're done at a certain point you're acting if your your life is changing but your character isn't That's... and i know i get criticized some people love the billy west years some people love the jackie years some people love the arty years some people love this they love when i did the channel nine shows but I've always tried to just give you me honestly and that's the same and this is what it is. This is what it, what it is. And when people get tired of it, if uh, I sense that my audience is done with me, I will leave. That will never happen. Well, there you go, Pete. I, I like your optimism. You know, that's never going to happen. There's nothing else out there that's really going to captivate people like your show has. You know why I'm good on the radio, too? I was thinking about me the other day. Most of my day, I think about me. <laughs> oh, that's a surprise. You were thinking yeah. about you? 99% of the time, I think about me. And and then the other 1% is the rest of you. Mm. <laughs> so I was thinking about my radio career. I was reflecting on it. And it was hard not to because everywhere in my office is a piece of memorabilia about my career. You, you've gotten it to the point yeah, where you right. can't not think about I it. I fully embrace myself. <laughs> I never used to, but now I do. Uh, <laughs> Every award, everything is oh, surrounding me. It's like is a museum. It's a museum to me. The Hall of Howard. Hall of Howard. <laughs> radio Hall of Fame. Because believe me, what else is there? And so I was thinking about me, and the reason I'm good on the radio is, A, it's a certain ability, a certain talent. That's, that's one thing you got to have. B, there's four things you got to have. B, what was A again? A was ah, that you got to have yeah, a certain you talent. Certain, you got to have a certain ability. B, you got to be... What is that certain ability? You didn't have it when you first started. Well, no, it's a certain s sensibility about the world, a certain sense of humor, a certain understanding about how to tell a story. It was in him, though. I it think. was in me. Yeah. I mean, okay. Well, what you're it, saying then it's is your family and the way you're raised. You had um, a. I don't know what you're saying. What I'm saying <laughs> is that many times I'd be sitting around my family and we had to tell a story. Yeah. And my father would say to me, "Stop. It's boring. Now, these were <laughs> harsh words." But they would, they... They it, fixed you right They away. fixed me. They, they made me nuts. <laughs> they made me neurotic, neurotic. It was mean, but nevertheless, they go, shut, you know. No, edit yourself. Parent, most parents today listen and indulge every word a kid says. And quite frankly, true. they're healthier, but they're big bores. You hear some of my callers. They can't even, they, 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 they do a wind-up for yeah, 15 minutes. Yeah, they can't minutes. even get into the story. They're bores because they've been overindulged and they've been told that everything they say is brilliant. So what I'm just trying to decipher here is yes. it still is something you learned. It wasn't a, an innate ability. You say your yes. parents molded you. Yes, that's I true. Agree. Um, you have, well, not just your parents. It's just, you know, but there also is a certain, it's like um, a great musician. They have a musical ability. Yes, they had to sit in their room and learn the guitar, let's mm -hmm. say, Eddie Van Halen. But there's a certain ear they have and a certain uh, ability to understand music. There is a talent there. Okay, so then yes. it's two separate things. That, that's right. It it's is a physical sort of gift you're born with. 
B, it's also the way you're raised. That gift could remain dormant. Like if Eddie Van Halen hadn't had certain surroundings, if he hadn't had certain influences in terms of music, it might never never have emerged. He might not have uh, felt comfortable enough to encourage that. So it's partly environmental. It's partly sort of what you're born with. A certain ability okay, to so speak. Okay, so you had a certain awareness of the world and a sensitivity and a sensibility right. toward information and and outside events. For example, my father was in radio. Mm -hmm. He was an engineer, but I was exposed to this idea of the microphone, people speaking into it. He was also a recording engineer. He had a recording studio. So that was instrumental. That's part of it. Yes. Instrumental is uh, an OK word to use. That's fine. You know, I mean, you would not have been on the radio without that is what you're saying. It's one of the components. That's right. Now, also the line, Howard, it might have been from God. You have to give God a little credit once in a while. Well, yeah, that's what I call the 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 thing that you're born with, this ability to look at the world and say, you know, gee, Mad Magazine's got the right idea. There's satire there. You have to have a, a sense of humor and appreciation. Sense of humor has to be cultivated by your environment, but also you have to have that ability. It's sort of an ability somewhere inside well, of you. Yeah, now, there's another thing. Where does sense of humor come from? Well, as uh, Pete puts it, if you believe in God or if you believe in the universe, nature, whatever it is, or the genetic sort of soup that we come from, mm -hmm. it's just sort of something that's there. Like Beethoven had his musical thing, and it came out early. That's how Artie made it to the point where he's at now. Uh, well, hold on. We'll get to Artie. Artie's a whole other case. Oh, man. <laughs> Artie defies. I, I also think it has to do with the atmosphere. It's a co combination of being born with it and the atmosphere you grow yeah. up in that develops. That's correct. Now, the third component, which is essential, essential in any success story. Now, I don't care what you apply this to. Pete, what, what do you want to be in life? Well, what do I want to be in life? Uh... I'm not even sure at this All point. All right, okay. Well, we were specifically talking about you. You right. were said you were thinking about But you. here is the and other there's four things. Here is the essential component. You talked about the essential component. Here's the third thing is the essential component. And that is <laughs> I want to see who's paying attention at this point. <laughs> He's making attention. it up at, right no, now. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what it is. All right. It is having the ability to practice. Now, what do I mean by this? Oh, you read this in a book a outliers. few weeks ago. I read some of out Outliers, and I responded to it, but some of this is my own thoughts all along. Outliers says 10,000 hours are required to be an expert. Now, I've never added up the hours, but the hours of me watching television, listening to Brad Crandall on the radio... Putting this together, seeing my father, and then actually having the time to develop this. WRNW, I was working a six-hour shift, uh, six days a week, and I got hours and hours of practice in college. I'd go down to the college radio station and start to practice. I started to practice all over the country what it is I wanted to do. Now, it's no different than... When you talk to a guitar player who spent his entire childhood playing the guitar in his room over and over and over again, there are guys who have done that and never succeeded. They, they're okay guitar players. But the ones who have this, as I say, born talent, mm -hmm. it comes out. And they, but they have to put in the hours of practice. Well, there are different levels of this born talent. Because That's right. Even the guy who doesn't play as well as Ellie Van Halen has a born musical talent. That's right. He's better than me at picking up a guitar. Howard, you completed all the requirements that it took to get to, to where you're at. You're yes, but you didn't even hear the fourth requirement. Wait a minute, you didn't, didn't hear, hear the fourth requirement. You don't know what the fourth requirement is. I told you, thousands of this hours of practice. This guy will never complete anything. A certain, well, he wants to be a professional I pot have smoker. ADHD, ADD. His ADD. He wants to be a professional marijuana uh, user. He wants Adderall. <laughs> right. He's on his way to his 10,000 hours of practice. <laughs> He's on his way to his 10,000 10, Adderall. The fourth thing, and I think this is very, very important, is being born in the right time frame. Now, this is something from Outliers, and this is a key component. When you hear about Bill Gates, who is a huge success, Bill Gates, if you go through his history, actually was born at a time where he had available to him as a kid because his parents were into some sort of computer science. They knew a guy 
who could, back then, you couldn't even get into a computer lab or get on a computer. When he was born, somehow the circumstances led up to he was allowed free hours, endless free hours in a computer lab where he got to work this stuff out. Him and his friends were like into this thing like like crazy. Mm -hmm. If they physically couldn't get the computer time as children, in other words, he had a certain privilege that you don't have. I don't have place. He was in the right place. I had a certain privilege. I got to see my father work with these guys with the microphone. Mm. I got to visit the radio station, WHOM. I got to watch the guys work. I was mesmerized. I was mesmerized by this. I got to see something a lot of people didn't get to see. Uh, This uh, Bill Gates, when they would describe him, he got to do this in a lab. No one did. He got. Mm-hmm. It, it was too expensive for people at that time. To, right. He got, computers were huge things. They he, didn't fit in people's homes. Yeah, and I don't know the terminology of what it was he got for free, but mm-hmm. it's a certain access to programming that you could only get programming time for an hour, and it was a fortune. And you wouldn't waste this on a kid. Right. He was allowed to go in there at night and use it all night and day. And that's what led to it. So it's part luck. Well, let me ask part, you something. Being born at the right time and part having an ability. What about these people who are born with nothing? Well, people who are born with nothing, it appears that they're born with nothing, but it's not always the case. Now, let me give you an example. You sit and you look at professional hockey players. That's what they do in the book Outliers. Mm -hmm. And the guy points out, he says, you know, Everyone in Canada, for, for Canada is a huge hockey place. And they say, well, you know, why did this guy become a pro? He didn't have anything more than anybody else. Maybe he had some talent, this and that. But it was the mere fact that they were born either January, February, or March. Now, you would never pick up on this, but here's what happens. In the school system, it's a full year. Mm-hmm. The kids who are born January, February, March are physically bigger. There's huge differences in physicality. You're almost a year Just older. From January, February, March. You're almost oh, a I year older saying. than someone born in December. And what would happen in hockey, for example, kids would go to school and the coaches would look for some star players. And they take the bigger kids. The bigger kids and also the kids who were older. They were a little more mature. They could understand a little better. They did better in school. They've even found that kids born January, February, March, because they're that almost a year older, they do better in school in the beginning. They get more attention from teachers. Therefore, they thrive a little more, get a little more encouragement or notice more, and they actually do better at certain things. But the, the hockey example is one where you are physically bigger. Now, they did find some hockey players who excelled who were born in, let's say, you know, later months. But the majority, and over the Canadian hockey players, because of the system and the public school system, January, February, March, I think it was something like 70%. Yeah, but they at least had a hockey system. I'm talking yeah. about somebody who winds up what I'm saying being is, the president of South Africa, born in, you know, what did Nelson Mandela have? Well, what I'm saying is we don't know that because I don't know the history of mm-hmm, Nelson Mandela, mm-hmm. but there could be something as simple, Robin. As the day he was born, because who would pick well, up on that with I don't hockey? Know if, uh, the I'm day t- he was born was very. Well, I said not to. that, but there's something. <laughs> there's some. There are circumstances that lead, right, to somebody becoming great. You know, or Dikemi uh, Mutombo, whatever his name is. He was in Africa, and they found him as, well, he, you know, what he, in the world? He was eight foot two, Robin. <laughs> yeah, but you still got to go find him. He didn't get here on his own. Anyway, I know. It was like that the- is why it is difficult. To even pluck anyone out and say, here's a radio show, or here's a TV show. It takes, like we were talking yesterday, they took David Lee Roth, a rock star, a guy who had spent his years practicing that and obviously excelled. He's a good rock star. That's right. And they said, go on the radio. Go do a radio show. Well, of course it was destined to fail. We all knew it. For some reason, the radio executives didn't know it. Yeah, there were tons of people who didn't know it. Right. Howard, and they had power, and they put him there. They did. But we all knew it. My audience knew it. You knew it. Oh. I knew it. It would have been like you touring as lead singer well, of Van Halen. Exactly. <laughs> it's funny that David Lee Roth didn't know it. His, right. his, you know, it's funny. I remember interviewing David Lee Roth. At, he, I invited him in to say, yeah. hey, David's going to take over our... A morning show, and I, I, and I remember he walked in with kind of a swagger, and I remember why. 
I think he was on edge. I think he was thinking that I was going to put him down and, you know, and, and, and ridicule him for taking over our show. And I didn't. I was just the opposite. Every time he sort of got a little confrontational with me, I, um, I, I, I showered him with love, really. Right. I said, hey, David, I wish you the best. And I think it took him, it took him like, into by another. Surprise, by surprise. Yeah. By surprise, yes. It took, he, he, he was like, whoa. He you was know. defensive. He was defensive that day. He really was. I remember it very well. And I don't think I'm projecting that. I think he really was. Oh no, it was absolutely true. Yeah, and he, you know, and I was just, and then when I was just saying to him, "Hey, I really wish you the best and hope you do well," but and and, and then he kind of, in his arrogance, said to me, and this is David, in typical David, he says to me, "You know, man, I'm used to speaking in front of audiences as big as three hundred thousand people. You think this is something to me? <laughs> this isn't a big deal to me. This is I've been doing this my whole life. And No, that's not you know. what he said exactly. What he said was this is the greatest opportunity for me because in a stadium I could only speak to that many people. Right. Now I'm gonna get to speak to all these yes. millions of people. And you quietly pointed out that who said there are going to be millions for you? Yeah, and I, yeah, I tried to say to him that day that you don't just automatically... You, you, yes, millions of people show up to see Van Halen. Yeah. Uh, this is different. This is you. You're out there. You have a microphone. It's blank space. It's a canvas. And you've got to fill it with something entertaining that your audience will find compelling. And I knew this was a daunting task. I mean, this he is not something to easily think done. That people would show up for him talking. Right. And they'd give him a couple of practice shows in Boston, and I guess someone had heard this stuff. And really, David was not prepared. Uh, the guy would have needed his, as they say in Outliers, 10,000 hours of practice, really. And who even knows if he has that talent anyway? He doesn't, he didn't, he didn't, who knows if he had one of the four requirements? <laughs> the show was okay. Yeah, I mean, listen, everyone has a story to tell. I could listen to someone on the radio and tell them what they need to do. But can I they can, do it? That's the that's other thing. The thing. It's, it's a matter of can you actually do it? When I hear someone on the radio, I go, oh, here's how you fix that. But then I go, well, if they're not going to hear that, how are they ever going to fix it? And you would feel that way towards everybody. That's the thing. You would put your, your mind beliefs above everybody else's in the world. What? In radio, in yes. Radio. In radio, I believe I'm as good as it gets. That's how I really do believe. And I'm not saying it from arrogance. I'm not saying it out of any sort of pompous notion. I don't feel about that way about anything in my life. I go to a psychiatrist three times a week and I go, I don't even know how to be. I don't even know how to be a human being. You don't know how to be you. I don't even know how to exist. It's, it's pathetic in there. I mean, it really is. It is it, you would think that I was an, an entire mess. But nevertheless, when it comes to this radio, I, I mean, I'm as competent and as I am the Beethoven of radio. Well, I, I, you know, I said it early on. I couldn't understand how other people couldn't see how much you knew. And well, when they were, t you know, when we first started, when we were at DC 101 and they would sit in the room and they'd start trying to tell you things. I was like, don't they realize he's the smartest person in this room? Well, you Don't know what? Don't they know he's the... They should be listening to him. It led to a lot of frustration. It really did on my oh, part. Oh, I'm sure. I would go home and sit there and go, why do I, I... I would visualize the whole thing, and I'd say... Why don't they get this? Why don't they let me loose? I don't get it. I mean, when Pig Virus and Dom Firavanti and... <laughs> oh, they and, were and, the worst. And uh, uh, <laughs> John Hayes. Uh, John that was Hayes. One. I mean, all of them. I sat there in a room and I said, this is like... De like it would be as if... Eddie Van Halen had to get guitar lessons from me. Or, I mean, it was like, it was ridiculous. Can you imagine people trying to tell Einstein what right. he should be doing? Here's what you that's, ought to do with that brain exactly, of yours. Yeah. I mean, it, it was that annoying to me. And I don't have this ability at anything else. It's this. I get this. I know what to do with this. Give me a fucking microphone. Give me a room full of my you know, my, my crew, and let the symphony begin. And that's what Sirius Satellite Radio has been to you, Howard. It's the pinnacle of your career. I'll tell you, you why. You're respected, and you have the power there. You don't got to... I know. I'm not respected. I, I, there's still... There's still people who don't mm. believe I know what I'm talking about. Believe it or not. Who? I don't, I don't have to say names. They still think they know better than me. But I'm going to tell you something. 
One thing about here, I get more respect, and there's another thing I get. For the most part, I'm left alone. And this is the the smartest thing you can do. Every time certain people poke their nose into this and start to mess around with my people, uh, and I hate to be cryptic, but when they start to mess with my people, when they start to offer them jobs, when they start to uh, tell them how to do their job, it, it, it is as I look at them as flies who have, who have no conception of what is going on. And I look at them and I go, how dare you question what we're... I don't even mind questioning. Questioning is good. But for God's sakes, what makes you think you know better than we do? Don't come in here and, and inflict your pain on us. But sure, I, I, listen, I'm not above criticism. I know there are things I do that are very boring on the radio. This might be boring on the radio. (laughs) But for the most part, we're able to hit some home runs out of the park. And stay around. And stay around for the party. There'll be one today. That's right. (laughs) Right now, there might not be a home run, but there will be one later. I can almost guarantee it. You can't hit one every time. Look, there are no slumps here. That's right. We're coming to do a show. And so, uh, no, this, the reason I flourish here is, number one, they have an understanding to leave me alone. And by leave me alone, they're smart about it. They say, listen, we think you know what you're doing. Here's a tough question. What sense does it make to not promote that you're going to come back to Sirius for no matter how long it is? So people can resubscribe, new people will join on, they're secure that you're going to be there. And we know you know this already. I don't know what you're saying. Uh, what I'm saying is, why wouldn't you tell everybody, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be around here. The radio show is going to continue. Because I don't know that that's true. And I'm not going to lie to my audience. He's claiming you know this already. No, I don't know. I, You know, I had a conversation. I, I had five conversations this weekend with my agent. Mm-hmm. Five. About this, yeah, because he claims I'm unavailable to talk to him. I go, it's just the opposite, Don. He's the one that's not in the office on Friday and Monday. Oh, my God, you can't find him. I said, listen, I call you as soon as you call me. So we made an appointment to talk, and we, we, we got into some really good conversation. And we had, um, like, five conversations about this very topic. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I, and then I, I do know what I want to do. I do know, Pete. Yeah. But um, I don't know that so Sirius like, is going to go oh, for it. It, it, it. You know what? If, if Sirius and I sat down in, a, in, a, in, a, in an easy way and sat down and said, here, let's continue on, it would never be that easy because there are things that I would like to be able to do. Mm-hmm. And there are things that I, you know, that I want to go and do. And uh, I don't know that they're going to go for it. I have something in my mind. Where perhaps we could continue here. They have to go for it. They, they, don't, they don't have to do anything. They don't have to do anything. Listen. You created this. No. Look. I did not. It was here before. I uh, Granted, no. I think they would have gone. I think Sirius would have been out of business had we not gone. Look, you, he created a lot of things in radio. Right. And they let him go. Right. And we, and we see what happens when yeah. they let me well, go. Well, they let you go, but they still let right. you go. But they do. Th- listen, I don't know, Pete. If it'll make sense to the company. And and I am, listen, I am a loyal supporter of this company. I love this company. I think satellite radio must stay around. I think it's terrific. And I think it's only going to get better. But the fact of the matter is, and by the way, someone said to me, you know how you say amazing on the radio? Mm-hmm. I say the fact of the matter is I'll t- way too much. <laughs> I was criticized for that. Oh, dear. But the fact of the matter is <laughs> that, uh, th- that uh, we could possibly be around some more here. But who knows, Pete? If I had the answer and I could tell you, yeah, I would give it to you. Waiting for it. I don't know that it's going to be so easy to bang out a deal. Man, I don't know. I'll tell you why this show is successful. Mm. The fact of the matter is, Robin's amazing. <laughs> well, that's right. That's right. You want to know something? Uh. And I'm going to take credit for Robin, or full credit. Full credit. 
Right. Because you didn't give birth to me. Give somebody everything some. but. But let me tell you something. My ability to recognize Robin's greatness yes. is what we're talking about. And your about chemistry, here. absolutely. Uh, that's right. Well, I recognize the chemistry. Let huh. me take credit for that. Okay. Yeah, Robin. Actually, I take credit for recognizing his genius. That's right. Her heart might be broke. What? Just not no. being around Howard every day. That's going to break your well, heart. That no, would I break mean, her some heart. people may not realize I was not going to take the job they were offering me until they played a tape of him. And then I said, I'm taking the job just to meet him mm-hmm. because yeah, he's that's incredible. True. That's true. And that's when you started wanting him sexually. That ah. was it. <laughs> How many years have you been pining away from me? <laughs> By the way, nobody's taking credit for Benji's contribution. <laughs> oh, Jesus. No, but th- that's just the point. Artie, a- Artie being a part of the show, Fred, Benji, these are people that I've chosen to work with, and they've chosen to work with me, and these are all good people, and that's part of it, too. You can't just have some schlubs. Yeah, don't worry about that, though. That's not your responsibility. I do, as a matter of fact. Or the fact of the matter is... <laughs> that's that, amazing. That's right. You've done enough I, for them. I have several lucrative <laughs> offers. I could be on the Real Housewives of Orange County as a fake husband. There you go. Uh, <laughs> Fred has a lot of money saved. Who knows what Fred's up to? <laughs> you know, no one knows with Fred. How are you doing over there, Fred? I'm doing fine. Let's get Thank off you. of this topic and move on to no, some. How actually, are you? I think, I think it's it pretty good that, 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 you, that you talk about. I think people should be fascinated about what it takes to become a guy at the top. That's right. But not everybody has the ability, so why listen? I don't know. Maybe, somebody, just maybe someone disappointed Maybe in someone will be inspired because not, <laughs> you're right. Not everybody can do what you do. Practice. Like, that but is practice a, doesn't do it no, for everyone. I told you, that's only one component. But right. I think you also have to <clears throat> love it. I mean, there's one thing that when, when you hear Howard speak about radio, you hear a passion in his voice. I that, don't love it. You, you know, I think you do. <laughs> look, I think Andre you, Agassi did That wasn't one of the components. He was really you're good at it. No, I, I don't you're, love it. When you said you were five years old, you dreamed of being on the radio. <laughs> yes, but I didn't love it. There was a lot of pressure in my life. I didn't love it. But and in, that's part of it, but too. You must love it, because in spite of that pressure, no. you People come here great. every day, you did what you did. No. Well, if he says he doesn't love it, why are you arguing he with wants it? Because argument. I don't think he's aware of it. <laughs> I don't think he's aware of his love for radio. Do I love radio? <laughs> Hold on, let me find No. <laughs> I think you're full Do of I shit. what? I think you love it. For 25 years, I've sat over here, <laughs> talking the mic, played with these pots. What are you talking I'm here every day. But do you love radio? Do I what? (laughs) Do you love radio? (laughs) For 30 years, I write the bits. 30 years. Lay in bed and think of shit to say. (laughs) Get up in the morning, eat my egg whites. Yeah. Talk to Benji and Fred. (laughs) Do I love it? Do I love radio? Not at 5.59 a.m., that's for sure. I've been going to sleep at 8 (laughs) o'clock. Watching TV and going to bed. Not fucking Beth, making sure I get to sleep. (laughs) And you ask me, do I love it? What kind of question is this? <laughs> but do you love it? Do I love radio? <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, Pete. Good to speak to you. This is a Howard TV original production. Hi, I'm Bobby Rooney. I manage Beetlejuice, and I'm also a professional boxer. Beetle lives here with me, my wife, and our three kids. Pete and I had cameras follow us around for the past couple of weeks, capturing Beat's day-to-day life. In this episode, Beetle's training me for my title fight. This is Beetle. Right, Snakehead? Right on, stop the cop. <laughs> what? This is Beetle. Is as bad as can. He knows he's the best. This is Beetle. That's the man. What you guys say? That's your baddest kid. Ah, baby, that is. So we prepared for witness. It's a tough guy. It's how we handle this. 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 It's how we handle this.
See, come on, let's go. You ready? I started boxing when I was 15 years old, but since I hooked up with Beetlejuice, my career has just taken off. Come on, man, what the hell? Well, yes, here we go. Beat's been training me for about three years now. Usually what we do is we set the alarm for about 6 a.m. He'll decide to stretch me. Hold it right there. There you go. He always tells me I have to stretch my balls. Stretch your nuts, you don't have a nut. You're not gonna stretch my nuts? <laughs> Stretching your nuts. What do you mean when you say stretch my balls? You really want me to pull it? No, when you stretch your balls, you stretch your balls. What else you gotta do? For what though? What does it do for my- It helps you when you stretch your nuts. What kind of trainer are you, man? <laughs> I'm a fuck nut. Pete, do you have to smoke every time we run? I don't think so. Pete, why do you have to smoke when I'm training? You know that's not good for my lungs, for my stamina? I can't kind of smoke and it's not even lick you, dick. You think that's good for me? No. Inhale I, that smoke? Is it good no, for my lungs? it's not good for you. It's not good for my stamina? It's not good for your stamina. It's a big fight coming up, Pete. Oh, yeah. This is a big one, man. Every time I ask him who my next opponent is, he gives me a different name. He told me I'm fighting Mike Tyson last week. He told me I was fighting Tommy Hearns. Oh, you probably know. You never know. He told me Ricky Styles, whoever that is, I never even heard and of him. Person, and the person you can fight with, it doesn't matter. By the way, do you have me an opponent yet? Yeah. Who am I fighting? <laughs> He's fighting Tony to Tony. Who? Ray to Ray. <laughs> It seems like he, he thinks that uh, insulting me and belittling me helps me. Run, you fucking bastard! You fucking filthy bastard, run! When he insults me while I'm running and tells me, let's go, you cocksucker, pick up the pace, I think that really that gives me the, the fire. Real quick. Run, you silly bastard! You have to abuse me every time we run. Hell yeah, you fucking bastard! You ready? You ready? I'm ready. You got your seatbelt on? I got it on, brother. There we go. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm way too heavy. You all right? I'm fine. Where we go? We're fine, sir. Go ahead, Bobby. You got it. Go ahead. Faster. You got it. Faster. Faster. Back. Oh, back. Back. Pete, I just farted. Did you smell it? Oh, yeah. There we go. We got to go to the market, Pete. Let's go to the market. The big one's on the Yeah! Yeah! Where are going to the market and get the 4-3 And now, taking a beat. You scream Jews a lot. What is it? I'll say, fuck you, you Jew. Don't you have some Jewish friends? No. <laughs> Hell no. What about Levy? Levy's a fucking Jew. <laughs> is he your buddy, though? Uh, he's still my friend, buddy. I still call him a dirty Jew. What about Shuli? Is he Julie? your boy? Julie's not a Jew. No? Why no. do they call him Julie, then? Huh? Oh, he's not a Jew. He's Catholic. He's not a Jew. <laughs> <laughs> what are you? Me? I'm not Catholic, motherfucker. <laughs> what about you? I'm just a regular fucking person. That's right. <laughs> All right, here we go, B. Here we go. All right, look. I wrote everything down for you. Oh, okay. Strawberries. Strawberries. Celery. Celery. Bananas. Bananas. A bag of ice. A bag of ice. A big thing of yogurt. Big yogurt. Okay. Half a gallon of skim milk. Okay, we got Carrots. that. Carrots. Carrots. And two cucumbers. Two cucumbers. All right. Okay. Seriously, don't mess this up. This is important for my training, these protein shakes, all right? Okay. We got that. You know, don't get no other bullshit, nothing. Just what's on the list. Okay. I sent Beat into the market by himself to get the stuff for my protein shake. Remember, Beat? Whatever you did, I did it on my own. Yeah, start. Okay. Let's see. Oh, we got to go out This is good. Bananas. We got carrots. Ah, what the hell? We just get this in the way. Oh, uh, can I get a pie, honey? You want on this row? No, no, no. A pizza. Oh, a pizza pie. He got everything on the list that we needed for the shake, but then he got a pizza. He got some uh, diapers and some fucking formula, baby formula. Uh, uh, shit. A lot of shit that we didn't formula. need. Do I want these? Do I want these? 
But that's all right. It's, he's my man. Whatever he does. Hey, you put it in your sack. It's fucking great. Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> I'll try that. How are you today? How are you doing? There you go. 5088. How much money did you have when you went in the shop that day? Oh, probably I had like $400. Wow. Nice. 40. Okay. So 41. Two. Three. Four, five, six. Okay, we're in trouble. <laughs> no, I ain't got the pizza. Yeah, I want it. All right. <laughs> we all set? We all set. How'd you do it? You got everything? I got everything. What the hell is it? What do you get fish sticks for? Hey, for the truth, I think. <laughs> Fish sticks, candy? What are we gonna do with candy? Oh, that's for, for later. Man, I told you what I needed. Oh, I, I couldn't know where you I didn't know where you were running it. What'd you get flowers for, dude? Hey, just to put it on the side. The side of what? You can't put this in the shakes. <laughs> hey, it's for it's all team fake. You're killing me, bro. Come on. <laughs> Why did you buy flowers, candy, and fish sticks when I sent you in for vegetables? Oh, because I must have gave him two because he's my bitch. <laughs> You ready, Beat? We're going to make some protein shakes right now. Beat makes me a real healthy shake. He puts nothing but real healthy ingredients in it. What, what do you usually put in my shakes? Uh, you can put cream butter, steak, ice cream, whatever the fuck you want to put in. Dog shit. Not dog shit. No? You can't put no dog shit in no fucking blender. What else can we put in there? Seems like something's missing. Oh, something's missing. Now, let's see. What's missing? When he was making my protein shake for my fight, he, he pulled out a bottle of vodka. I was like, hey, B, what the fuck? Remember you? Hey, because I took a fucking drink. That's why. Ooh, that's nice cold ride. Right. So what are you doing with that? What are we going to do with that? We're going to put it in there. That's for my training? I'm going to drink vodka? Vodka. You ain't drinking this, are you? <laughs> you can't put that in my shake, man. You don't need this in your no. shake. No. So we're good, right? You, we're good right there. That's good. Smells good. Smells good. <sighs> Here's to another great training camp, Pete. Thanks for everything, Thank buddy. Thanks for everything. Fucking good. Well, now, taking a beat. What? You have booger in your nose. I do? Your left, your left nostril, is it? Oh, yeah. Check in there. Just grab it with your hand and throw it out the window, no? You just throw it. Let me see. Let me check it out. Oh, I got it out. Clean sweep? Okay. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Come on, we gotta go to the gym. Hurry up. Come on, let's go to the gym. Right? Do you have my opponent's name beat? Do you know the guy's name that I'm fighting? Uh, you're you fighting that Polish guy, right? I don't know. What, what's his name? Uh, I think it's uh, his name, uh. I don't think his name, I think his name, uh, Ricky Stryver or something. <laughs> Oh, Ricky Styles? Oh. Ricky Styles? Something like that. I don't know. When me and B are preparing for a fight, we take it to ringside in Jersey City. Hey, what's up, bro? What's up, bro? What's up, Sean? What's up, Sean? Coach. Where you been, B? We just waiting a half hour. Hey. B, what happened? Walking around. We've been waiting a half hour. 
Let's go. Let's, ready to Let's, go to work. Work. Let's go to work, baby. Beetle decided to bring in a co-trainer to help out with us. He's uh, Mike. He's been in the business for a long time. He's he's studied under Beetlejuice, so he's you know he knows what he's doing. You gotta get on his toes, boy. You gotta tell him. You gotta be on his toes. Yeah, he's on his toes. Tell him then. Stay on your toes. Don't square up. You got a fast hands. Come on. Finish up. Finish, Finish up. up. This is that last stop. Come on. Finish up. There you go. There you go. I'm motivated why he's in the ring. If you're going to bonus everybody, somebody, you do it. That's how you think, do it. Think before you do it. Come on, faster. Come on, faster. Faster than that. Come on, faster than that. Come on, don't forget that right hand up. Come on. Chin up. Get that chin up. Get that chin up. Keep it up. Body in there. Get that body. Get that body. Yell at him, B. He's slow. Come on, Come on. stay on that toe. Come on, let's go. Stay on that toe. He usually likes to hold the heavy bag while I hit the heavy bag. What kind of Make him work. Oh. Call yeah. the combination. Call the combination. Let's go. Let's go. Watch his feet. Here we on. go. Come on. When I'm hitting the heavy bag, he does everything he can. He holds it, and his feet are off the ground, and he's wobbling around and shit. Uh, sound like I'm doing a fucking bottle rock dance. He's like a bottle rocket. You said yeah. You said yeah. There you go. There you go. Come on. Hold that jab. Hold the bag still. Come Hold on. it tight, Pete. This still. guy's Come 120 on. pounds. Come on. I got it. Don't worry. Come on. Don't worry. I got it. Put the hook behind you. Hold it tight, Pete. That's it. Now go to the body. Switch to the body. Go to the body. Come on. Come on. Keep it up. Push him. Push. All right. Good work. When I'm working out, Pete wants to make sure I have a lot of fluids in my body so I don't get dehydrated. Come on, get the water in there. All right, good. That's good. If you box, you gotta stay hydrated. That's how it goes, man. Back up. Double jab right here. Step to right here. Is that good? That's good. One more time. Don't forget that right hand. Double jab. Dig to the body. Dig to the body. Yeah. Go to the body first. You know how we got that? Yeah, Come on. Come on. There we go. There we go. Come on, Jeff. Ten seconds. Finish up. Come on. Come on. Come on. Here we go. There we go. For now, taking a beat. This graveyard. You ever going there? No. You want to go, you want to go in there now? No. Come on, let's go in the graveyard. Are you crazy? Why not? I'm going to go around. I'm going to pull in. Uh, no, I ain't going in there. Why not? You crazy? Well, take a little walk through the graveyard. No, I ain't going in no graveyard. How do you get in, right there? I'm not going in there. You crazy? We'll walk around for a little while. We'll take a look around. I'm not going in there, dude. Come on, dude. I'm not going in there. You gonna make me go by myself? I'm not going in there. Come on, Bobby. I'm not going in there. Why not? I'm scared. You don't like graveyards? No, I don't. Bobby, I'm scared. <laughs> Serious? Yeah, I'm serious. I'm scared. <laughs> I would never do that to you, bro. <laughs> Hey, B, why were you late for my fight last time? I was looking everywhere for you. Everywhere? I was downstairs. I don't know where y'all guys were. Hey, where were you? Oh, you just got here? Yeah, I just got here. I'm looking for you, dude. I just got here. Five minutes. Where'd you go? Huh? Where were you? I was at work all day. At work? Yeah. He's a cop now. Long days already. After office. Yeah. Don't go nowhere and don't drink, right? <laughs> it's late after the fight. Don't drink. I ain't, right. ain't going to drink. You got to take a shit. Get the fuck out. You gotta, you gotta Did you stop for a couple drinks? Is that why you were late? Mm, probably. Yeah. 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 On fight night, Beat really gets real intense and emotional with me in the locker room. He tells me, listen to him, to shut everybody out, don't listen to anybody else, just listen to him, and, and uh, he's with me, he's behind me 100%. I said, I love you, you can't lose. What's your name? We got to do this. Don't worry about what I'm saying. Just do what I tell you. When you do that off the cut, just do that. 
When I get in the ring, when I tell you something, you do it. Always. You got to do what I tell you. I don't care what nobody else says. Just do what I tell you. Focus on it. Keep your mind on it. Mm-hmm. Do what you got to do. Do what you got to do. When you get in that ring, make sure what I, when I tell you. Do what I tell you. Do what I tell you. That's the main thing in your head. Do what I tell you. Having beaten my corner means the world to me. As long as he's there, I know if I listen to him and I, I execute his game plan, I'm going to have a good outcome every time. When I get in the ring, when I tell you something, you do it. Just do what I tell you. Stop that jab! Like that launch! Stop that jab! There you go! Do what I tell you. Stop that jab! Stop that jab! There we go! This last fight, it was definitely for Beetle. I dedicated it to him. You know, with him at my side, I know I'm going to win. Beat, I just want to thank you for getting me that victory. I couldn't have done it without you. Thank you. Now, is it right if I use this little fucking head as a speed bag? Oh. Come on. You wouldn't use it, but it would help you. (laughs) It won't damn fucking help you, scumbag. This is the best of the wrap-up show. Wrap up a show. recap and behind-the-scenes look with John High, John High. and Gary Delabate. Gary Delabate. The best of the wrap-up show begins now. Hey, it's Gary Delabate, Baba Booey. On Monday's wrap-up show, Robin stopped by the show, uh, talked about her, her thoughts on going to Guatemala. We told her she was crazy for going. And then we discussed other trips she took that didn't work out so well. Uh, to third world nations like to Venezuela and to India. So here's how it works. I was not going to get on a plane and just go to Guatemala. Right. So <laughs> let's dispel that. It sounds like people think I'm just going to be wandering the streets of Guatemala but alone, you mi- looking for people who need help. You missed the beginning of this, which yeah. is really funny. The guy said he went down there four times for you know an adoption. Adopt, they, he I said the Marriott the was surrounded by barbed wire, <laughs> and they told you that if you leave the hotel, you're on your own. Right. And he said the worst part, uh, the worst place he went to, the guy who was Guatemalan drove by at 90 miles an hour, wouldn't even stop. You understand where everyone's concern is coming from, Rob. Of course, I'm concerned, but I, you know, I'm I'm interested in going to a place that has those kind of problems. 
So the danger is part of the thrill for you for the no, trip? No, it's not a thrill. You know, sometimes unless you've actually seen or experienced something, you really can't convey the need. And that's what I'm looking for. So you feel like you have to be there to really express. Yeah, I have to to see it firsthand. So wh- who are you dealing with an organization, a charity of some sort that's going to facilitate yes, this trip? Yes, it's called the United Nations Foundation. Okay. I wasn't sure. I wasn't <laughs> sure. So so you spoke but you've already spoken to them and they've told you that you you know they've given you an idea of what you'd be doing and how safe it'll be. No, they just said uh, we're putting a get- together a trip I had talked about wanting to go see what they do firsthand. Right. And they said, we're putting together a trip to Guatemala. I had originally said, you know, because they do a lot of work in Africa, too. And I had said to you guys that I have an interest in doing that. And they said, well, you know, the next trip we're organizing is to Guatemala. Maybe, you know, I know it's not Africa, but maybe you could do that one. What about well, the rough parts of Hawaii? They didn't have any trips. Well, you know, Robin, I was saying that I actually um, identify with you on this because when I was going to Afghanistan, I was getting the whole like you're crazy to go this <laughs> oh, and yes, that I remember and all that, that. So, you, you might have been doing it. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> no, I was not one of the ones who said you're a father, you shouldn't go. I might have to get tape of that, <laughs> but um, I will tell you that I spoke to the people at the USO, and it, it was great because they said, "Listen, you know we have to, you know, there's always this, there's always that." But they said um, the thing that made me feel really good. They said in the history of the USO, no one's ever died. Mm-hmm. Then I said that on the air, and then people told me like Glenn Miller died, <laughs> but but he died like in a plane, in a plane crash. On, on the way like, to or from, you're in danger. No one's ever been kidnapped and murdered on a USO <laughs> tour. So I'm hoping the UN has a similar track record. I, I haven't asked them the track record. I see Alicia Keys in Africa. I see Madonna in there Africa. There are a lot of people coming and going, <laughs> and you know I've never heard of. We haven't lost any stars. But but I will tell you the other rap I got even when I was over there was, you know, like w- one of the shows we did was in Kandahar, and then one of the shows we did was 150 miles north of Kandahar, and it was pretty rural. I was told, like, you know, you hear Robin Williams does it, Billy Crystal does it, Letterman does it. Then I found out that those guys go to, like, a base in Iraq, which yes. is not even near anything that's going on, and they do it on that base. They're not really in the thick of it. So you have to really investigate. Yeah. Now, the off-air chat that Howard had with you, did that have that any effect on your- That seconds. Gary witnessed that. I did. I told him. I, he, I, he said, please don't go. Please don't go. And, <laughs> you, and I that said, was it. And I said, uh, <laughs> you, Robert goes, I'll be safe. And I go, what if you don't feel safe, Robert? goes, I'm not going. <laughs> hey, Rob. Very simple. The level of safety you feel right now, if you like had kids Gary's age at this point, mm-hmm. would, would it stop you from going? I would take my kids with me. So they can experience what you're experiencing. Absolutely. Oh, I thought you mean you didn't like your kids. Yeah, I would no. <laughs> leave I, them there. It would be interesting. Like I had, a, I had a list that we didn't get around to talking to. I showed it to mm-hmm. Howard today, and it was from the United States Embassy documenting all the crimes against tourists in Guatemala this year, and it was six pages long. Right. But I wonder what that list would look like if you were Guatemala and it was a Guatemalan embassy talking about Manhattan, how much crime there was against tourists in Manhattan. True. Sure. But you know, again, those are people who. Who knows why they're in Guatemala? Maybe they're, they're just there to see the sights or to have an adventure or to do whatever. I, I'm going under different circumstances. Oh, no, but that may not... Why you're going doesn't change what somebody might no, do. They, yeah, they, they always they, ask. No, no, they no, 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 Wait a minute. They, 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 they say, wait, she's a good person. No, no, no. They say these people were out just walking around. I'm not going to be out just walking right. around. Robin, I'm glad you're down here because before Guatemala came up, we were talking about your event uh-huh. because there's still a lot of confusion I, as to... I, the, the, you know, we were trying to do something simple and it has caused nothing but confusion. It's amazing. Okay, so can you clarify for us? It's a, it's a cocktail party mm-hmm. for the charity and... You said there was sort of a confluence there with your friend who's an artist. He's going to be selling some artwork. The artwork is for sale. Okay. It's an art show and reception. Okay. Or an exhibition and a reception. Because Benji asked, could he just come and, you know, look around and eat some food and I then know I could. Go. No, no, no. I know I could. But what I wonder is, I don't. what is Robin's expectation? That you'd come and walk around. What would I expect no, from ben, Benji? Benji's saying if he comes with a date and he comes and has a couple of glasses of wine uh-huh. and a couple of hors d'oeuvres but doesn't buy anything, will that be seen as, as no, you know, being... No, 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 no. You're there... No, I know you would never say, like, hey, you know, where's your gift? Like, but but is your expectation that whoever goes donates? No. Okay. The, the expectation is you'll come and you'll see the art and you'll learn about the girl fund. Oh, I like that. 
Now, what about all these implications that you're involved somehow with this artist? Uh, that's it. I'm out of here. <laughs> I, would, I do enough of that on the show. I, I will tell you one thing. I will tell you one thing. John asked me if I thought there was something going on, and I said there was. I can't, I can't point to anything. But we went to a charity event a week ago, and I sat next to your new best friend, uh, Ross's wife Melissa. Uh oh. And um, <laughs> and I tried to I tried to squeeze information out of her. She's either either nothing's going on or she's an amazing actress. Because <laughs> I really, she goes, oh my gosh, no, you know, and I, I don't know. She seemed pretty credible, but I'm, that makes me believe it even less. Well, uh, you guys continue to speculate, and I have to go. Is right. there work any on this event? It's it's her son, like secretly. Rob, th- that guy's Robin's son. Yeah. <laughs> the math is there. He's uh, he's thirty nine. <laughs> He's not 39. 39? I think he said he was 39. How old is he? He's like 28. I don't know his age. (laughs) But Robin, one thing you did... (laughs) It was 29. 39 seems old. (laughs) I'll move off this topic. But one thing you did say, you said you have a burning desire to save the world. And I thought you were saying it in part tongue-in-cheek, but in part seriously. You want to have that kind of effect. What other things do you want to do that you haven't done? Uh, Let's take it one at a time. This is a big deal, you know, to actually, you know, try to get to one of these developing countries and see what's happening that's just a a a first attempt at education to find out what the problems are what the needs are on a first hand basis because some of the trips you've gone on in the past granted they weren't for this purpose Uh but gary brought up you know issues you had in india or wherever (laughs) else that was a pleasure trip yeah, so, but you had no pleasure. Uh, no, because I couldn't get to the people who actually know how to get pleasure out of it. <laughs> I remember you. I remember some discussion about you just being very. You were like, I think you tried to get out of there almost the second you got there. I think it took you three days to well, leave. Well, here's what happened. It's it's a, again. I was supposed to go. There was one plane a day to the place I was supposed to go to, and because I was delayed by a day because of equipment problems in England, I didn't get there on the day I was supposed to make that plane. Right. Every other day, that plane was booked solid. And so I had to go to the airport and see if somebody just didn't show up. For four days in a row, I did that. And my friends had to move on. They weren't staying in that one spot. So it would have meant staying two weeks where I was in the city of New Delhi or leaving. But I chose to leave. And how did you feel about New Delhi? (laughs) (laughs) that is not a place i told you know i've told stories i actually saw a man kick another man a taxi driver took me every night i changed hotels because i was trying to find a decent hotel and the last time i said let me just go to a hotel with an american name so i booked myself into the hilton and this cab came to get me and it was almost like a cart with a lawnmower motor in it and you know the guy took me to a gas station and said i need gas <laughs> i was like oh this is how he's going to he's going to get money out of me he's going to ask me wait to you had a, you had to gas up the car to get to where you were going. <laughs> i need a transmission <laughs> so i need a kidney right so i paid for the gas and then he drove me to the hotel and i get out of the hotel and there's a guy with you know one of those indian headdresses on and a red suit you know and a beard standing at the door And, you know, he's getting my bags and everything, and he's taking it out. And then I'm going to go pay the cab driver. And I wanted to give him every dollar I had in my pocket. And so I'm just peeling off these Indian this Indian currency, and the doorman grabbed the money out of my hand and said, no. And he took a couple of dollars and he threw them at the guy. And the guy started to argue with him, but she wanted to give me. And he just kicked him and said, get out of here. <laughs> hey, what's up? This is Will. And on Tuesday's wrap-up show, Medicated Pete came down to talk about the dating game that he was just in. Uh, we offered him a little bit of advice on you know, how to work it with a woman. God knows he needs it. Check it out. Dave in Pennsylvania, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey, guys. How are you doing? Huge fan. Hey, Dave. Um, I, thought, I thought sure Medicaid Pete was going to pick uh, um, the older girl there that, was, that had been put in jail. Chris. Uh, Chris, yes. Um, but then after the outcome, and he, and he picked uh, the girl in the wheelchair there, was he intimidated by her because she was in jail? No. Uh, or, or intimidated her because of her age? He didn't seem to be bothered by anything. 
No, no. I mean, he yeah. seemed to say, I had a genuine connection with Dinah, and that's why I chose her. Then why does everybody yeah. think that Chris would have been the one? I mean, the caller saying it, you guys said it. I, I thought that, I thought that, um, I mean, I, th- I thought that he liked her as well. I thought she was the easiest one to bang. The, the middle one. Yes. Yeah, Chris. Yeah. Yeah, she would, Howard used to say this a lot. He doesn't say it as much anymore, but this was even before I worked here. He used to always say, find a real fat girl with a, you know, with a pretty face. And then you know work her day, way down. Then she'll she'll be like loyal to you forever. But, but what, what happens if she works her way up? Well, uh, you know. And I think Artie said she'll lose the weight, and then Jared. she'll and then she'll yeah. lose Pete and yeah. and go for Jared. I, I couldn't tell if <laughs> if that would be quite a jump. Well, you know, you how much Pete. weight do you think she's losing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You got but Dave. You, so you were surprised when uh, Dinah ended up being the choice. Yeah, yeah, actually, I was. I thought he was. I, I thought she was going to go with Chris. He, she was closer to his age. Um, yes, yeah, she was a little bit heavier, but you know, she said she was going to lose all the weight. I thought she was going to pick her. All right. Well, you know, Pete get, keeps everybody guessing, and if you missed it, here's the well when Pete makes that decision and takes the drama and cranks it up a couple of notches. It has come out now. Oh, and I'm company. set. To reveal my choice. <laughs> this guy's good. See how he drags of it out. Who I am? It's great. Gonna be potentially seeing for a while. <laughs> are you dragging it out because you're having doubts, or are you dragging this it out is, for a drama? It's the drama. Drama, good. Okay. This is as long as the relationship. It's the ratings, last, you know. No. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I give the rose to. Dinah! Dinah! Dinah, Dinah, you were contestant number one. You're in a wheelchair. (laughs) Dinah just wheeled out of here. I'm sorry. (laughs) She left. By the way, I think in that clip, he sounds like Christopher Walken. He's like, by the way, I give the rose to Dinah. (laughs) Pete, definitely living in the moment and, I mean, physically gives a rose to Dinah in in her wheelchair. And Dinah was happy to win. The next question has to be, what's going to happen on this date? How do you think this is going to go, Will? Uh, I don't like the way it's sounding already. Even listening to that clip, he just sounds like, you know, he's ready for marriage. And, and she's that's going to freak a girl out right away. She seems pretty normal. Like she's had a relationship with guys before. You know, he hasn't had a lot of experience with women. So it's kind of showing, and I, and I worry that it's just going to freak her out. Gary, where do you see this headed? It's, uh, it's too soon to tell. I mean, it's going to be – listen, they're going to go out today. There's going to be cameras on them. It's going to be very difficult. Um, she seemed to genuinely like him, but how much she likes him, we're going to find out. But – We'll know more. You know, the, the the thing is, I thought she's pretty genuine, so we're going to get a recap tomorrow, and I, I think she'll be pretty upfront about what she thinks. Benji? I think she'll say he's a nice, sweet guy. We had a great time, and maybe we'll see each other again. But unfortunately, I don't see it. She lives in Philadelphia. I just, I, I, I don't, I think they'll have a nice time. You know what's going to happen, because I've seen this go down before. What's today? Today's uh, Tuesday? Mm-hmm. Like Thursday afternoon, Pete's like, can you give me the heavy chick's phone number? <laughs> <laughs> well, Medicated Pete now joining us here on the wrap-up show. And Pete, we've been a lot of people thought you were going to take Chris, yet you said that there was a connection that you felt with Dinah. Can you describe that connection that you guys had? Well, I, I, I think I felt off the bat that we had a connection with this disability thing. So we had something to relate to, you know? So it, it's something to talk about, you know. So, so so we're not we're not on like uncommon ground, you know what I mean? And you were pretty fired up this morning for this for this contest, no? Yeah, I was. I still am. Yeah. Yeah. What was the um the little person's name? Lila. 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 Was Lila was some you, you picked? You, you know, I, was Lila I have ever to say in the mix? Something though, no. I have to say something. Um, say it. <laughs> <laughs> what would you like to say? Pete? I was a little. I, I I honestly I was a little intimidated by. The other two. Really? Why, yeah. did, why did Lila intimidate you, the s- smaller person, and then why did Chris imitate, intimidate you, who was the larger person? I, I actually... <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually thought that they were coming on to me a little bit too, little bit too much, you know? They put too much pressure on me. How so? I, 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 I just, just felt that I just got a bad vibe from them. They, they just can't... They just, they, I think they wanted me to pick them, so I, I kind of, I kind of had a lot of added pressure that way, you know. But all so, of them wanted so, you to pick them. That's why they were here. Oh yeah, yeah, but 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 more more so to them, more so those two. Yeah, I, that's I, yeah. I Dinah felt, definitely was the most like. Uh, I kind of felt threatened. Not into, by, yeah, but, I kind of felt threatened by by the by the two of them. But in what way? So. In what way did you feel threatened? Just like 
you know, like 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 I said before, they they almost wanted me to like pick them, so I was like on the spot with them a little bit, you know. Well, Gary, makes so okay. and with with Dinah, she was more reserved, like more more just like sitting back. You so know? Chris and Lila were trying too hard, almost. Would you say like were they they coming on to you too strong? I'm trying to understand what you well, mean by intimidating you. They were they were trying too hard. Like they were they they were in it to win the game. They weren't there for you. You almost felt like no, no. They they, they were. They, they, it seems like like they were too, they were too competitive. You know, like they wanted to win the game, yeah. or and then yeah. it wasn't about you. Yeah, like I I don't I I don't I, I thought in like a small way it wasn't about me. Mm-hmm. Like you know, so. Lila the whole time I noticed like was making eyes at Pete like the whole mm-hmm. time. Like you'll see it more when it's on the TV show, but she was like kind of. <clears throat> Like winking and like little just, adorable eyes, yeah, and a great rack. She was cute though. I mean, I mean, she she had a lot going on for her. I mean, you know, for her size and were, everything. But but I mean, uh, you know. <laughs> were you distracted at all by that? A lot going on for a little is what you're saying. Yeah, Pete, were you distracted at all by any of the girls? Were they sort of trying to keep you know locked in on you and, and as the other ones were talking and maybe have an advantage at the game? Um, no, not really. Again, it's more of that intimidation thing, you know. More, okay. uh, but know. but Dinah wasn't intimidating at all. Felt very natural. No, no, she she just felt like she just felt you know pretty cool, not, not intimidating at all. So that's that's one one of my reasons. Yeah. Now by the end of the game, it sounded like you were falling pretty hard for Dinah. Like you know you're you're smitten. I don't know if that's the right word, but it seems like you you know, you've got some great expectations for this date and maybe something beyond. I, I think something something could actually happen here. I, I think that, that's that's what I'm thinking. I, I don't know. I could and, be totally wrong. But and you know. what's your like? What's your game plan? How are you going to play play it out for the rest of the day? Well, we're going to this western place mm-hmm. and uh, this western bar. I don't even know where it is, but somewhere. And uh, we're going to uh, somehow rob the mechanical ball. So that's that's going to be interesting in itself. So Yeah, but that's sort of a fun kind of moment for the cameras. I'm talking when you're sitting together at yeah. the table, like what what kind of conversation are you thinking oh, of? Like what when, kind of move are you going to make? When we're sitting down, I'm I'm, I'm going to ask questions, you know. I'm you should like, kiss her right away, get that out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to be like, you know, like hey, what's up? <laughs> so, like that. so what you uh, you guys have any advice for Pete and what uh, he should be doing show the weapon right away <laughs> no, just you know just remember it's a first date you know even though you, you might be a little smitten and everything and you might think she's the one remember it's a first date and if, yeah, you, if yeah, you come no. on too strong sometimes you can scare women away but she seems yeah. to like you yeah uh, Tommy in Massachusetts welcome to the wrap up show keep it real up in the field all right I What's up, guys? Hey, Tommy. Hey, um, Pete, you were awesome today. Thank you. Uh, it was surprising that you picked the one in the wheelchair, but I understand. You know, the one, the fat one said, was it? Was her name Large Marge? No. Because um, she said that she didn't like to get uh, oral sex. She liked to give it. Right. That's usually the winner right there. <laughs> but you know what? Yeah, we'll be very great true. Show? Yeah. Great show. Mark the Bagger and, and uh, Pete Tourette's. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks for the suggestion, Tommy. Chris, I guess you said before, might have been a little bit of aggressive, but it seemed like she was up for anything. I mean, I would would think. Yeah, she she definitely had a little bit of mine. Hey, she was very sweet, but uh, but her weight didn't bother you at all? Like, you you still physically attracted to her? It it, it wasn't a weight issue at all. But so you're physically attracted to her? Was I physically attracted to her? Yeah. Not 100%, but yeah. I mean, there was some attraction there. That's cool. Yeah. So what would be a turn yeah. off? I mean, if that's free- great if you can... Yeah. What well, would- well th- just <laughs> the fact that, that she said she wanted to lose all this weight w- 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 was kind of cool to me because she was conscious about that. You know? Right. What would be a turn she, off, like- Pete? What would be a turn off for you? Like, what would, could, could the girls have done or looked or said that you would have been like, game over, forget it, I'm not interested? Well, he said it last week. <laughs> Full-blown AIDS. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Shuli, and on Wednesday's wrap-up show, Dan the Song Parody Man called in to refute some claims that people were making, and wouldn't you know it, him and I got into it, things got heated, and we decided to end it like men, in a comic off, which sounds really gay. Uh, check it out. Are you surprised that this is your reputation here? 
No, I'm not, because you guys constantly try to fucking prank me, constantly try to throw shit at me, and you have nothing. You have fucking nothing, so you have to make shit up. Surely fucking, surely talk shit about me, talking about my fucking appearance, when the guy looks like a cross between a Holocaust survivor and a fucking cancer patient. But, what does, that do, but what does that do when I get laughs and you get nothing on and stage? He's, and he's criticizing it. I've, I've never seen that happen where you got laughs and I got nothing. Again, Please, I was, let me, tell you, let me remind you of a story. Let me story. remind you something in Florida. You're on stage dying, eating the biggest shit sandwich I've ever seen a comic eat on stage for 10 minutes when a guy looks at me who's standing in the back room looks at me points to you and goes who wrote this shit for him and i and i told him you wrote this shit for you that's that's the shit you present on stage i i would happened. doubt that there's a fucking writer out there that would be proud to say i gave dan that material surely i understand that you're a comic and you've been doing it for over 10 years and i know that's i've seen you do the exact same set for those entire 10 years without changing it up except for maybe adding like an elliot off an impersonation and shit like that and i'm sorry that you said i didn't mean dan, to say that dan, you're a bad comedian when i said lack of material i meant that you had a slow news day so you ran a bullshit news story on me and if you're offended about that, then fuck you, man. I thought we were friends. <laughs> when you fucking first came to New York with no money in your pocket, and j Rock didn't fucking reserve the hotel for you, I fucking bought your fucking hotel room for you. Until I got you got my place. career started, and I thank you for that, Dan. No, no, no. I really I, do. No, no, no. You didn't get my... I didn't get, and I put, well, I put then what the fuck are you taking like, credit for? What do you take credit for? I came out here because I was booked on the Stern Show, not to fucking room with you in an apartment that you're not even paying for. <laughs> no shit. I bought you... You a sitting here hotel. like you're fucking handing out people gold. You, you're fucking... You're... You're, uh, you're squatting in some guy's you're, fucking apartment you're with hair fucking, all over the fucking place. You're twisting the fucking story. It wasn't my apartment. I fucking put my credit card down for you to have a room at the Park Central on 7th Avenue. And I appreciate that. Listen, that has nothing to do with what we're talking mind, about. You attacked me shit. first. I you you attacked me first. Chris, and I fucking picked you up at the fucking airport. So don't give me the So what did I... And what have I done for you in Vegas, cocksucker? What did I do for you in Vegas? Who got you to go up on stages that you fucking can never set foot back on again because you sucked so fucking bad. Who you helped you in Vegas with all the fucking connections I had? In Vegas, you lying fucking pieces. Fuck shit. off. You're a fucking scumbag. You're a phony. You're a phony scumbag. You used to fucking do. Fuck That's off. Fucking Fuck off. You had nowhere to go. You're banned from the hard rock. Where else are you going to go? Say this to my fucking face when it's not gang up on fucking. Oh, you gonna bring one of your shit. knives, Boy Scout? I don't need any fucking knives. <laughs> Give me a fucking, fucking break. Up cancer, all you do, all you do, all you do, all you do is get out it on the air and then threaten people with physical fucking confrontation. That's all. That's your only fallback, no, dude. No, I'm telling you, be a fucking man and see if you can look me in the eye. I don't need to look you in the eye. The same fucking lies in person that you're trying to fucking get air. That's fine. I'll tell you. I'll tell you face to face when you come up here for your one day of work a week. This is all I can say. I hope your child, when it's born, looks just like you. Hey, that's mean. What? I said I hope his child looks like his father. That's mean. I know, is that mean? That's I, don't know, I, I don't know that you... Is, 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 that, is that to... Well, hold on, Dan. Dan, is that to apply that surely... Dan, stop talking for a second. Day one, and I've even fucking sat around and allowed you to wow. fucking run bullshit on me when you have a fucking slow news day. And then you Again with this slow fucking, fucking news day. The, the host air. of the show and numerous people told me not only did you take one gift bag, asshole, you took more than one. And I didn't even mention that on the air today. No, you talk... Well, you're totally full of shit. And you're fucking... Everybody's full of shit but you. Everybody's full of shit but you, right? Yeah, absolutely. Right. You have it. You you're never wrong. You can never take a step back and say, you know what? Maybe I was out of line there, right? We're all the oh, fucking scumbag, line. lying, rat assholes, right? Somebody handed me something, okay? You guys are constantly trying to fucking set me up for shit. But when I fucking see you, you won't look me in the eye and tell the same fucking lies because you can fucking do it over the airways, but you can't do it. To and my what are you gonna face. do? What are you gonna do when you see me? You threatening me? You no, gonna I'm come and punch you. me? You gonna come and fight me? No, I want to see if you're capable of fucking telling the same lies while looking me in the face and showing the same anger and animosity towards me while looking me in the face because it's easier to lie to somebody or lie about somebody when you're not looking them in the eye. But Dan, here's a news flash for you. I'm not lying about what I'm saying. I'm just telling you what the fuck went down, what I was a witness to and what numerous people oh, were a witness, a to. witness to. And then, even, and I was in the fucking studio, jerk off. I was there. I saw the bags lined up against the fucking wall and I watched you fucking walk off with one. No, you watched. You, you weren't there when the host Mitchell handed it to me. You watched me leave. Who was it? Crystal Gale with her fucking long hair that I mistook for you? <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Listen to me, Shuli. You're a fucking piece of shit. You're showing your fucking true colors. <laughs> I am. I am. I don't bring a second suitcase when I go to fucking help a friend so I can clean out their fucking room. I, that's a scumbag. 
That's a never fucking did scumbag. It. Never did that. Of never course did not. That. And again, you fucking Sal keeps trying to crow by that fucking story in that fucking Levy's old driver fucking said. Yeah, and you, now all of a sudden Yucca was witness to it. The last time it was somebody else. How many people fucking flew home with me, okay? Yeah. I got the fucking ashtrays right here that were from the, from the fucking Beecher show. They weren't from the hotel. I fucking prevented other people from taking shit from Artie's room. Some people that used right. to work. Uh, Dan, show, Dan, 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 hold on a second. Can I, do you think that there's a concerted effort by everyone on the show against you? Or do you think that it's just, you know, you're just another guy. It's part and parcel to be part of the show that everybody throws everybody under the bus. Everybody throws everybody on the bus. But you say, you don't, don't you, wait, anything, you, Dan, Dan, Dan. If they Dan. don't have anything fucking truthful to throw them under the bus with, they will conjure shit up. But you don't think you're but getting it any worse? about the fucking answer. He's came from salad. He wasn't even there. Dan, you don't think you're getting it any worse than anybody? What? No, no, I think everybody gets it. But you know what? I'm not a fucking pussy. I'll stand up for myself. Hey, hey Dan, you, I know you said everyone's... Let me, you, let me tell you some good words to live by. Don't ever start shit with anybody, but don't ever take shit from anybody. I don't start shit with anybody. What fortune cookie did you read that in? It's fucking game on. Then it's game fucking on. Hey, Dan, I was just wondering, because you said everyone's making up this shit. So, like, when the news wanted to do a story on you, like, Owen oh, already $15,000, and you didn't want that story to run, and you got all angry, is that made up? And or you that threatened just, Langford. Yeah, you threatened Langford, and... No, I didn't know. I didn't threaten Langford. I yes, you did. It's very detrimental for him to run the fucking story. Hey, hey, and hey, he chose hey. to do it anyway. Listen, Jason, you're the fucking bitch boy of the office. You're yeah, a I know, fucking, Dan. You're a little fucking man-cunt pussy. Even mm -hmm. back at fucking K-Rock, you're always the gossip girl that would fucking IM people in the other fucking mm -hmm. offices about what's It's weird. I have a job here, Dan. Fucking rat on people. <laughs> what's that? I have a job here. I'm here, you know, five days a week. So yeah, I can't no, be that much of a bitch. It, it, it gives you more class. You tried out for a job here and couldn't beat Yucko the Clown. Gary, when did Dan become like Scott Salem? Everybody's kicking the guy when he's down. I, you know, listen, I've that's heard, I've heard these do. stories from people. That's what people do. That's what people with nothing better to do do. That's what people with lower self-esteem self do if they want to feel better about themselves. That's why you don't see me ever jump out and fucking dog pile on people and shit on people. Because I got fucking no problem with it. I got no problem with it. You guys are a bunch of fucking pussies. Anybody that's trying to talk shit and fucking gang up on somebody, the gang mentality is for fucking weaklings. But, but Dan, 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 Dan you could make You're the never fucking Dan, hold on, I'm talking. You could make the argument that in your own way, you gang up on uh, people because, if, if, you know, if this wasn't about you, you'd have a song parody ready about it for tomorrow morning. And I know while that's your job, that's also your way of ganging up. That's not ganging up. That's not ganging up individually. It's a, group, it's a group of people attacking. And I have no problem because I can defend myself in a group of people attacking, okay? Whether it's fucking physical or verbal. I don't give a fuck. Wait, wait, Dan, Dan, wait, Dan, I got an issue with Who's that. So you're saying physically? making a song parody about, let's say, you know, Gary's teeth or, or, or Sal's wife's emotional friend or whatever. You don't think that's part of jumping in because it's an individual effort? No, Gary's teeth is a fixture on the fucking show, okay? Okay, so that's not, it's something that he's accepted. I didn't make a single song about Sal's wife because I was respectful about that. The same way I didn't make any fucking songs about Artie being on drugs, because I'm respectful of certain things. When something is an established fucking topic on the show, then I'll make it a song. But I'm never going to fucking drive a nail on somebody if I think it's going to hurt. Are you going to make a song about the hotel thing, thing, man? What kind of that? You can make a song about this hotel thing? What hotel thing? Your uh, hotel thing. Tully in New York City, you're on the wrap up show. Yeah. I went to the ho I went to the airport. I put my suitcase down. <laughs> the lady looked at me and said it's one hundred fucking pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Tully, go ahead. Where's that Where's that fucking clown? Um no, I was just trying to think how many people have been at a Shuli show and said to the guy next to him, Hey, who wrote this shit? <laughs> Well, it wasn't my show, but Dan was on the show. It was a show that Dude. Levy and I were doing, and Dan was up there sucking the life out of the room, and the guy yeah. asked, who wrote his yeah. material? Hey, Shuey, let's just go to a club together in New York City any fucking night. We'll any day of the week. Is this going to be like eight Hold on, guys, guys, guys. Is this going to be like, guys, 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 guys. Now, be now, like now, eight now, mile now, for comedy? Yeah. yeah. Comedy yeah. showdown. Yeah, right? Let's do it. The same fucking 20 minutes let's go to the showtime at the Apollo. I'll do a set there. Yo, Gary, that's... Hold on, Dan. That's a fair challenge. Let them go ahead. Anytime. Let's get an audience and see how they react. I have to tell you, I've never seen your comedy, and I'm not giving you any shit. The only thing is I know that you don't have as much experience as Shuley... Exactly. So I would think it would be di more difficult for you, but I I've never seen you. No problem. We, go, we just go to a random comedy room, not packed with Stern fans, not packed with anything. And I, can I tell you something? The not last time I saw stars. Dan, the last time I saw Dan uh, <laughs> perform, uh, I even complimented him on a bit that he did that I actually thought was really funny, and I told him about it, the, the one about your dad that you did, about your Jewish father, and I even right. complimented him about that. 
But of course, you know, it doesn't look to my face, Julie. You're not looking me in the face right now. I just complimented you, know, you now on it, douchebag. Open your fuck, move the hair out of your fucking ears, and listen to what I'm saying. I just complimented you on it on the air, like I did to your face. And if you were standing in the studio right now, I'd tell you that you're an unfunny scumbag to your face today, like I did on the air. Hey, can we do the can we do well, the challenge, I'll, I'll, Dan? I'll give Dan, you the opportunity to do that in person any fucking time. Can we do the challenge tonight, Dan? Um, tonight I'm busy. I'm sorry. Unless you want to do it after ten o'clock. Oh, well, know. that's usually when people go to a comedy club. <laughs> Surely, could you do the challenge tonight I'll if we call found a Caroline's? I'll say. Well, don't say. Let's not say. Let's find oh, another right. place. Okay. But um, again, surely the way to do it is unadvertised, without stacking room with people, non-strength and regular crowd. How many well, minutes? How, how, how many minutes each? Are, how is he stack? How would he be stacking the room with people? You're on the show. Shuli's on the show. I mean, is, do you think Shuli gets an advantage Gary, there? I say ten minutes each because ten minutes you could pack in your best stuff. Right. right. Ten minutes each. Ten minutes no, and no stern stuff at all. Just no audience up, at all. Yeah. Just I mean, why wouldn't, stand up. why wouldn't you advertise your comedy? That's every show, Benji. Yeah. Yeah. What, what kind of logic is that? No, no. He's saying he's saying he wants he wants a fair audience. He wants to take the trial to another city. No, he's got a point. He does have a point about that. Yeah, I know. I, I'm in. So they're going to walk up and they're going to people who yeah, have no what? predisposition to the show. You don't have right. to announce it. You just walk up Surely, to a I club and I let's see what happens. 20, I could laugh for 20 minutes straight at your fucking Elliot Offen impression. I could laugh for fucking 10 minutes straight at your Bobcat Goldsweet impression because I'm old enough to fucking remember who he is. But if we just go into a regular fucking room, okay, where people aren't going to fucking know Elliot, they're not going to know the other stuff, and you just do your regular material, the stuff that I love. The fucking That's fine, Dan. Club, Whatever you say. Just, just, just Make Whatever it all say. Just, just make Dan, Dan, hold on. Dan, 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 stop talking. Jesus. Just make a, no Stern Show references. That's fine. I'm fine with that. that I, do, that I did levels stand that up long field. before I started working here, and I got, <clears throat> I got, unlike, you know, and Dan has a lot of material that has nothing to do with the show as well. Right. So I'm more than happy. All right. I'm more than happy to do that. Ten minutes. No Stern Show references at a site you guys agree on. This Jason, is like, Jason, like 3 o'clock We high. don't know if it'll be tonight, but, but whenever we do it, make sure TV knows about it because I want it taped and I want audio yep, no for problem. the show. And if Dan loses, he cuts his ponytail off. How's that? Yeah, so, so what does Shuli have to offer? He's going to grow hair if he fucking <laughs> I'll, loses? I'll shave my ass hair. No, Dan, if you lose, you fess up that everything you said, every dispute you've had with all these so-called lies is truthful. You admit no, none of them are truthful, so I'm not going to fucking lie, and I'm not going to fucking lie under any circumstances. And I wouldn't want him to do that. If let me he... tell you something. If I said if I take my best ten minutes, <laughs> and even if it kills, if you put it on TV, my whoever loses, and good minutes I have. Whoever However, loses, I'll whoever loses, whoever loses has to kiss, kiss the head of my cock. Actually, oh, boy, uh, that's really gay. Yeah, yeah, no, for you. The, the foreskin, the with, winner no matter no, what. With the foreskin over it. You have to kiss my foreskin. Oh, oh okay. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, 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 whoever loses has to kiss my foreskin. Boy, Sal, 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 some guys Sal, 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 I, I don't care. Yeah, I don't care that it's Dan or Shuli. Why would you want a guy to kiss yeah, your penis? Because it's disgusting, and I won't bathe for two days. Oh, and it'll, it'll smell like, everything is got, like a twat rash. Thursday's wrap-up show, all the talk was about the Superfan Trivia Contest, which came down to the last question, and Gina pulled it out. It was surprising that a woman won, uh, surprising that Steve crossed out his answer when he almost had it, but not surprising that no one knew what Vinny Favalli's full title was over at CBS. But it was a great contest. We talked about it a bunch, and here's how that went. The Superfan Trivia Contest, that was won by Gina, who... It really came down to the last question, Gary, and she she stuck with her answer. And I feel bad for Steve, who came in second place, because he had it, and then he just let it go. Yeah, yeah we should point out that um, when you see it on Howard TV, I have a monitor in my office. So wh when they were people were writing down the answers to their questions, the camera sort of pans across so you could see what everybody's doing. So I could see the answers that people wrote down before they revealed them. And Steve had written down the correct answer. And then Howard said, Matt, what do you have? And Matt, who was his competitor next to him, held up his answer. While he was holding up his answer, Steve, out of the clear blue sky, abruptly just scribbled off his, the right answer and put in the wrong answer. And Artie and I and Robin, we all saw it on our monitors, and we were like, what are you doing? But you can't yell it out because that's the contest. You got to go with your gut in those situations, I guess. And something overcame Steve. He thought differently, and it cost him. It cost him the big prize. should have read the book Blink, where they tell you to go with your gut reaction. But what did you think of today's contestants? Um, they were all really good. I could tell that. Uh, what was the, the, the guy from Boston's name again? Matt. Matt. I could tell that Matt was going to have difficult. Matt was at a disadvantage just because of his age. You know, it's just one of those things where you really have to have been listening to the show for a long time to run the gamut. But for a guy his age, I thought he knew a lot. He did very well, and I thought the questions they didn't go far necessarily 
that far back in Stern Show history. I mean, there was a question about Java and a couple others, but I thought he did well. But Steve and Gina both, hey, they know their stuff. I thought Steve was a slam dunk when I saw him in the green room. I had played him, I think, on uh, Stump the Buoy, Beat the Buoy, and I beat him, but he was really, really good. Um, but she was great. God bless her, man. She really kicked ass. And I've heard through people who work on the show here, I guess she's sort of in the inner circle of some of the whack pack and the killers of comedy. They say that her and her husband are like the nicest people you'll ever meet. Oh, good for her. Congratulations, Gina. Were you surprised that a woman took home the big prize, Gar? A little bit. A little bit. I mean, I've met women who are big fans of the show, super fans, but there's just so few of them that... Um, I mean, there are a lot of female fans of the show, but there are, f- there are very few women who really, really know their stuff. And I just thought that guy, Steve, you know, he had a cockiness to him and he just looked in a confidence. I thought he was going to be able to pull it off. Now, Matt from Boston said a couple of, of things I found compelling. One was how the pride he took in heckling Artie and getting Artie to notice him, you know, right. just being acknowledged. Do you encounter that as well? Like somebody, if they can get you to react to a Baba Booey, you know, the pride they take in annoying you in some instances? I guess. I mean, I, I only see the part where I'm annoyed. I don't know the pride that they take. I don't know if they go home and you know, brag to their family. I told you, I think one of the most annoying ones, you know, you get, I get it all the time, and sometimes it's a term of endearment, and sometimes people say it with like a, you know, like a thickness to it. They're like, hey, what's up, Baba Booey? And, you know, you can tell it's like that, but I, one of the most annoying ones is when I first moved up to Connecticut, I was in the supermarket, and the guy got on the speaker, and he's like, Baba Booey, Baba Booey, third aisle, Baba Booey. <laughs> and I'm sure he went home and told his whole family, I tormented Baba Booey today. Oh, uh, that's so funny. <laughs> I never heard that. That's very funny. Yeah, it was, and I'm like, I just moved up there, and I was like, God, I'm just trying to get you know lettuce and <laughs> you know fucking whatever avocados, whatever my wife wanted. With the family, or were you by yourself? I was by myself, but that's even weirder because I'm like walking down the aisles, and no one's reacting to it except for me. Like I, nobody in the store knows even what that means. No, but the guy who's saying it over the mic sure knows what it so means. So proud, so happy. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing Matt said was how big of an Eric the Midget fan is, and he was just thrilled beyond belief to be able to speak to Eric on the phone. How did you think Eric handled those accolades that Matt gave him? Oh, the way he usually does, uh, barely breathing. You know, you could tell, Eric, you're the greatest. I think you're the best. Da, da, da. Five, four, three, two, one, the long pause. Good. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like the guy, he has no feelings. Uh, he did apologize to Artie, though. Not to me. He didn't apologize to me. Yeah, I don't think you're getting an apology. Yeah. He did he should have you know, listen, he jumped the gun. He he crawled all over Artie without having all the facts. That's true. Now, um well, I shouldn't say he crawled. He rolled. Oh. <laughs> he rolled all over Artie without all the facts. Did you think the questions were too easy, too difficult, or just right? It's very difficult for me to to judge that because my knowledge I think is so extensive that I, I you know, I wonder how much a fan knows. Um, I actually moved some of the questions around. Jason put them together, and I'd taken two questions that were in the easy, and I moved them to the medium. Um, but I, I guess they were sufficient. You know, the, the 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 way you know you failed on a question is when nobody gets the answer. Mm-hmm. And there was one of those today where no one got the I, answer. I even I thought that made it. I mean, it was so. I thought it, it was. Uh calibrated just right and i think even the fact that there was one thing that everyone missed i thought it made it kind of interesting um there was you know there's i've been here a long time there's a couple things i didn't know and a couple things i did i I was impressed did you think it was going to come down to knowing vinnie favali's title in full i don't i don't know if anyone knows that (laughs) that's a great even even i had i had everything about it right except instead of calling him vice president i called him head i always call him yeah no i head of you know head of late night programming cbs east coast but now do we know is he still that because that's what he yes okay yeah, Vice President, CBS, Late Night... Pro- East Coast. Late night, <laughs> Vice President, Late Night Programming. Isn't it end no, development? Or no. no. CBS, East Coast. Late the, Night Programming. Yeah. They haven't developed anything in 20 years. The East Coast is a kicker, but Steve... On the East Coast. Well, that was the fun part. Yeah, East Coast. Well, Steve, though, almost had it. He just had director instead of VP, and he didn't have CBS, and Gina was close as well, but she didn't have that full title. That was a, that was a good question. Yeah, that question was a killer. Um, were you worried that Howard was going to run out of questions? They kept getting them all right. Well, yeah, J- John, you and I were in the back. It got to the point where they were getting them right, getting them right. And John and I started like uh, trying to come up with some good questions just in case Howard said, what am I going to do? Because I hate it when he says, all right, we have nothing left. Let's just split the money. It's, it's a game. You should have a winner. Yeah, and they, these guys set the bar really, really high. And again, congratulations to all of them. I, I know we did it once on the show, but which staff member do you think would have done the best on this quiz today? Me. I, I really do. I mean, I think I just I go back the longest way, and I have a good memory about it. And I think, I, in fact, the, there was one question in there, 
and it was the only one I didn't know. It was one that we didn't use. Which staff member broke the glass on the Xerox machine while copying his uh, bare ass? I think I know that. Who? Fred. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah. And I didn't know that one. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think you'd do well, Benj? Yeah, pretty well for the years I was here. I've been here, yeah. yeah. Right. The problem for you is that is that there's a, a huge chunk of time back you know, NBC and you know, before I you know got of because I've I've assimilated him, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff I like. I didn't know the years of Bobongo. I knew around what years, but that that wouldn't. Have Those are the hardest questions yeah. I think. We need the specific year or date. That's really tough. Yeah, for me, Bobongo, like I put everything to um, to uh, something that's going on in my life. It's the same way I can tell you almost any year of a record by sort of remembering where I was when the record was. So for Bobongo, it was easy because I remember Mary and I had just gotten married, so I knew it was '92. It was easy. Now, if you missed it, here's the big ending where Steve comes so close, but Gina ends up winning Howard Stern Super Fan Trivia. What Tom Cruise movie did Kenneth Keith Kallenbach have seen in before it was cut? Uh, the super fans are writing. Steve is the last one to put his pen down. I'm going to go to uh, Matt first. Huh? Matt, go ahead. I said Rain Man. I said Rain Man. Rain Man know. is not correct. Uh, Steve, go ahead. I originally wrote Jerry Maguire, but I believe it was Vanilla Sky. Vanilla Sky is not correct. Uh, let's go to uh, Gina. Gina? Jerry Maguire. That is correct. You screwed oh, yourself. 25 points. You are a super fan extraordinaire. Super fan. Wow. Well, Steve super and Gina are making out. Matt shaking hands. Super fan. Steve, I thought you had that Dude, one. You had I did it. have it. I what went it wrong? Out. You crossed out the right answer. Yeah. You oh. had Jerry Maguire. Why did you cross it out? I, I just, uh, I, I knew that was Artie's movie. That's too. the same one I got exactly. cut out of. Yeah. Yes. But it was the two of them together. Loser. You know, our hearts go out to Steve, but congratulations to Gina. And a good group of people today. Sometimes when people come in like that, they can be really, sometimes Sometimes people get weirded out when they meet some of us and they get sort of odd and annoying. These were all super nice people. Uh, Nick in Lake Tahoe, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey, guys. How you doing? Hey, Nick. Who came what's up? up with all the questions? Uh, Jason. Yeah, did you all put them all together? Yourself or uh, everybody kind of pitched in on it. Uh, what's the deal on that? Um, Jason came up with some of them. I think John pitched in. Doug Goodstein pitched in a little bit too. Yeah, it was mostly Jason. Jason coordinated it, and then we uh, sprinkled in a couple. The, yeah, the hardest one I had was uh, the movie one. Which movie did Howard take his first wife to? Yeah, I, I, besides I, that, I did really well. I didn't know that one. When I, I looked at all the questions before, that was one of the ones I didn't know. That's a tough that. one. That, that's yeah, a tough one. I'm a huge Lenny Bruce fan. So. Hey, that was a great job today, guys. Uh, you guys have a good vacation. We'll talk to you. Thanks. Right. Thank you, Nick. Let's go to Rob in Connecticut. Rob, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey, guys. Good job today. Uh, real quick, one funny thing I noticed, that you know, given the size of some of the people in there, nobody even picked up on it. When they asked the question about J.D. and uh, the web girl that he was a fan of, the one guy mentioned Cookie Puss, and nobody touched on what Cookie Puss actually is. It's we, a giant, like, ice cream cake from Carvel. Yeah, no, no, we know it's a whole bit with Fred, and we did a whole bit about it, and we, we just think that everybody knows because it's been played on the air so much. I thought the series of answers to that question was the, probably yeah. the funniest part of that entire well, bit. It was uh, Cookie Puss. No, one was Pussy Fur. Pussy Fur, the first guy said. Then, then she, he said Kissy, Kissy fur. fur, which was correct, and then Cookie Puss. Hey, did she ever... I don't know, JD's not. Did he actually get her to use the dog on her? I'm not sure. Only JD would know that, and and I don't think JD was particularly pleased. I heard that, him, that question was used. Uh, did you hear him yelling from the back? Yes, he was like, "Good enough already." <laughs> I think as different questions went by, a lot of people yelled when it was their question. Right. How, you know, yeah, how did you react oh, the AD, about the uh, yeah. blowjob? I, I just said it's all for the show and moved yeah. on, <laughs> even though I never claimed that. <laughs>
Medicated Pete is a 34-year-old guy. Never had a girlfriend. He's my intern. He's uh, on Tourette's. Let's bring Pete in. Where is he coming in from? Come on, Pete. Who knows? Who knows if we can find him? <laughs> there you go. Uh, oh, there wow. he is. Uh, medicated Pete. How you doing? Us. Take a look at the girls. Don't look down He's at the floor. He's looking down. <laughs> Poor Pete. He's so shy. What's up, guys? Hi, Pete. Uh, that's right, girls. Say hi to Pete. There All right, what's is. going on? Pete. Uh, what's up, man? Uh, Pete, are you Tourette'sing right now? I'm taking out like uh, like it's going out of style right now. <laughs> and you got three girls who have seen you. They understand you have Tourette's. They're interested in you. Pete, what do you think? Of who do of, you feel the connection with? Out of all, out of all due respect to uh, to the three candidates from the show today, Go ahead. I give the rose to Dinah. Dinah, Dinah, you were contestant number one. You're in a wheelchair. <laughs> Dinah just wheeled out of here. I'm sorry. <laughs> she left. I'm shocked. Why? She left. Why? Shocked. You're shocked. She left. D- why Dinah? Well, she. Uh, I kind of, kind of feel that I have a connection with her. Kind of awesome. from that. From what queen? From the yeah. from, no, from from the just the disability thing, you know. Let me just talk about Pete's date real quick. I'll, I'll give you the update. Um, Pete, come on in. Hey, Dinah. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Dinah. Yes. What was that? What? You were like this. I have to pee. I was. <laughs> oh, you have to pee? I have to pee. Yes. So why don't you go pee? Because we're waiting for you. But we go can pee do this. now. I don't want. I'm feeling too much pressure. <laughs> no, it's okay. We can do this. Pee. Well, listen. Want to bring? Are you there? Want to bring the phone with you into the toilet? No, it's okay. All right, Dinah. Yeah. Bottom line, I want you to be honest. Don't hold back. Hey, Pete, how you doing, man? What's up, guys? Wait a minute. I want to know from Pete if he had a good time on his date. Personally, I did have a good time. Okay. You had a good time on the date? Yeah. You guys you went to lunch? it went well? And we, we, are, we had a good time. You went to lunch? Yeah. You had some conversation? I had some conversation, yeah. Then you guys rode the mechanical bull. Was, well, you did. I did. Fun. She did, too. She did? Yeah. All right. We got some yeah. film. We'll show that. We'll yeah. show us we got some video. Because right, I just wanted to know his perception of how right. things went. Dinah, right, right, right. I really want honesty here. I don't want you to sugarcoat it. Okay. How, how did it go? Well, I did have fun on the bowl and stuff, but I have to be honest that it was really tough. Yeah, I could tell. I, I um, didn't watch the video. I listened to the audio mm-hmm. of the video. Okay. And I'm sitting there going, there's no way this girl's going to be into Pete. There's no way. First of all, she's cute. Wait a minute. Let me ask you something. Did it start out with her being interested? Did he lose her interest or? Here's the bottom line. I'm going to teach Pete. This is good. I got to hear these tapes because now I know how to work with Pete. Pete could have shit going on. Mm -hmm. Your perception was it went well, Pete? I thought so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want him. I did. I didn't want him to hear that there was any reservation on her part. When, I wanted to know I'm, what he thought. Right, I understand. Could could now when you maybe s- I'm not seeing it properly. I don't yeah, know. exactly. Because you were like that was a good day. You saw her. You were physically attracted, and I don't blame you. I thought she was cute, and yeah. you were feeling even love for her, right? Yeah. Yeah, and you left oh. that date thinking that you were going to get a shot with her again. No, I I I had kind of reservations. What do you think went wrong? I don't know. I I I I can't really put my finger on it. See, know? now this is with yeah, your I, prompting. I, I He's really now seeing. See, I wanted to know. I understand from what him you wanted to know, but that, I have to cut to the chase. Yes, but I really yeah. wanted to hear that he thought it was a good date. He, he thought did. he had a chance. He, you know. Yeah, he thought he had a shot. Yeah. You thought you had a shot. But I'm Re- telling you, realistically, no. I mean. It went horribly. I was listening to the audio. It was a terrible day. I'll tell you what, and I'll, and I'll sum it up for you real quick. Because you haven't had a lot of experience. You're 34 years old. You haven't had a girlfriend. And, Dinah, you tell me if I'm right. Yeah. Okay. You didn't ask her any questions, man. Yes. You yes. know, you know yes. it's not your looks. It's not your affliction with the Tourette's. You couldn't have been any less interested in her. When you're out with a girl and there's no, there's, there are such long silences, you wouldn't believe it. Real uncomfortable long silences. Were there? All Pete had to do was pretend he was, pretend you're, you're the host of an interview show. And here's your subject, Dinah. And you're there to hear everything about her life. Right. All you had to say to her, 
was Dinah. I'm so interested in you know your life. Um, so tell me where you were born. Boom! I was born in a small hospital and blah 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 blah. Okay. But you got to listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to listen because you got to have follow-up questions. <laughs> right. And so you conduct right. an interview with a girl. And this is a great lesson for guys. And it took me years to actually realize this, that it's really not that hard to talk to girls. All you got to do is pretend to be interested in them. Mm-hmm. Pretend, did I you mean, say? be interested in them. <laughs> Here's a girl in a wheelchair who's going to go to law school. So what do you There's say to a girl? Some interesting what do you stuff. say, Pete, to a girl who's going to law school? What what type of law are you interested in? Ah, you here, didn't pretend think that, of that yesterday. You know, listen, listen, like this. Here's what you say to her. What made you want to go to law school? Were you intimidated by going to law school? What kind of grades did you have in high school? Was this your dream your entire life to be a lawyer? Was your father a lawyer? Anyone in your family a lawyer? What is it about the law that interests you? Do you ever get frustrated that lawyers have such a bad reputation? Dude, this would have been great conversation. Thanks. She would have been putty oh. in your hand. She would have said, "You know what? I finally met a guy who cares about me." You hear what I'm saying? What yeah. race would you most like to put in jail? Any question would have worked. <laughs> Something, Artie. <laughs> but Pete, you didn't ask her a thing except you rehashed one time. It was getting so uncomfortable. He finally goes to her again. What kind of music are you into? Which is what we asked her on the the oh, show. Sh- you knew her. You should have even said, "Gee, I thought it was really interesting. You're into Queen." Um, because, uh, you know, I, I've always wanted to see them in concert. Did you ever get to see Freddie Mercury live? Something. What concerts have you been to? Yeah. You went right back to the same question. What happened? You froze up, dude. I did. Were you interested in her? I did. I, I, I was just so nervous. And, yeah, and, huh? and man, just, you choked. It just... You choked didn't on this go one. go well. You know no. what, Pete? When, you know, when you want something, you have to get over the nerve. Well, not only that. It got so quiet in there. All they were doing is eating. And Pete's, you know, like not most guys who are eater. he's not he's the greatest running, eater. Yeah. You know, a lot of food flying all over the place. And, <laughs> right, Dinah? <laughs> yeah, that's just part of the food date is the messiness sometimes. But, but you would have been okay with it if the guy was really a good guy asking you questions. You know, when yeah. girls say, I want to only meet a great guy, all they're talking about is some guy who wants to ask him a few questions. Mm-hmm. I'm telling Interested. you. Yeah. All right. I'll play you some of the tape here, Pete. Oh, this is brutal. Really painful. Painful. Here we go. I'm not so sure if I want to hear it. But no, it's good for you to hear go because this, if I get you another date, you can't blow it like oh, that. Any question, yeah. like what kind of gravy would you like on your shirt? But what? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what, what yeah. You got, uh, Pete, you ready to hear this? What? I'd rather uh, go like this with chalkboard, but, you know. Uh, so, I mean, don't you want to learn something? This is the yeah, tough of part of the tough whole part of learning, you know? Yeah. yeah. All right, okay. here we go. Medicated Pete. Let me find Let's what page. It. I got you. I listened to it this morning. I had a hard time with this here. I wanted to just give you a hug and say, Pete, this chick was a winner. You could have had this chick out of her wheelchair, laying there in the bed with those wobbly legs spread, and you could have been inside. This is not a girl who, uh, she ain't too particular. <laughs> right, Dinah? I have standards. I understand. <laughs> but no guy's getting into those pants if uh, you, you don't, don't ask her a question. Yeah. yeah, I could tell. You didn't even give him your number. She did. She got, you got the number? Yeah. I did, because it was kind of an awkward situation. I wasn't sure what to. What to do. Yeah. Yeah. I um, once gave my number to Charles Manson because of it. It's just awkward. So I said, here. <laughs> you see, you got the number. But you ain't never. You didn't call her last night, did you? No. No. She's already changed her number, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> that's, email address a, that's one of those temporary phones. Yeah. How soon into the date did you know it wasn't working, Dinah? Well, I mean, at first I, I was hoping that I could get him to, to talk a little more, but... I don't know, as we kind of walked over there and it was really quiet, I I, I kind of got the hint that, like, oh, wow, I don't know what to do with this. It was but weird. But, Dinah, couldn't you help him at all? Could no, you she just... tried. You'll hear the tape. She yeah, tries. She, she tried. really I... tried. Yeah. Oh, dear. And, uh, I, I, I was leaving work. I saw Pete crouch down in the hall with his head down, and Diana's sitting next to him, and he wasn't saying anything to her. I knew there was going to be trouble. Head I was, down. I should have pulled you aside right then and there, Pete. Right? I should have given you a little a lecture on how to handle it. I was getting kind of nervous. Is that what happened? Yeah. What are you so nervous about? Because I, I didn't, you know, 
don't know. You thought she was out of your league? No, no. It would, uh, I don't know. Well, Pete, when you've you been you sitting know? at home thinking about, you know, girls, you've been dying to have a date, right? Haven't you rehearsed this in your he brain got, a million uh, times? Let me ask one question. Yeah. What happened? What, what do you mean you got nervous? Well, it, it, it probably all went, went back to that staring thing in, in the hallway yeah. with, the, with the equipment. When you were staring? And I saw you walk by, so, so I was, I kind of, you know, kind of wanted to, uh, not rehash that a little bit, you know. What are you talking about, Howard or the girl? Howard. What did yeah. I do? We're I talking it. about the girl. No, no, no. I, no like, like, I, like, like I said, it like, all, it all came back to that staring thing when you were walking uh, down the hall, you know. Yeah. Uh, so I, I was, I was. I don't know what you're talking about. All right, here we go. Here's medicated <laughs> pizza date. But I want to know, didn't you ever right. think about what a date would be like and what a great date? Obviously you know, not. You were dreaming about a date and. All right, let me get to the tape, brother. Let me get to. Okay. Don't audio. rub it in too bad, oh, to him. All right. He knows he blew it. I'm, I'm explaining it to him. Medicated Pete, here's his date. There's a lot of eating going on. What'd you order, by the way? A uh, hamburger. Hamburger ain't for you on a date. Ooh. What you got to order is a glass of water. Tea. What? And tea. <laughs> tea and water. That's your, that's your meal. <laughs> Not you even got a, a pedophore. All right, here we go. Uh-uh. So I wanted want to give you my uh, my contact stuff. So. Okay, cool. Um, or you know, you can even if you, you have my email. So if you just drop me an email, okay, then I will have your information. Okay. We'll do that. We'll do that. Stop, sorry. That's okay. Yeah. In close quarters. Huh? Yeah. That's when you poked her with your arm accidentally. But at least what I made happened? some cut. He poked. She, he said he was sorry because he poked her in the arm with his arm. Oh. But at least it, it led to it some conversation. Just a little tick or something. Yeah. Ooh, there's some stuff in here. So yeah, uh, I mean it was like that. Like she's wow. eating and trying to get something. So so here, here, here here's some more. Hey, Howard. Yeah. I I I mean this is making me sad to say I think Pete's near tears. Oh, are you? Oh, Pete, oh, you are? Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, Pete, I'm going to get your girl. Don't worry. This is a good... This, she was the warm-up. Oh, was, um... Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be fine. Come on. I mean, you know... Well, well I mean... I don't know. Yeah. I think... I know the whole conversation, but... You but choked what? on But I guess not yesterday. <laughs> not yet. All right, all right. Are but, you laughing but, or crying? If um, you start crying, I'm stopping this. <laughs> I'm laughing my ass off. Oh, okay. Good. I'm, I'm, I mean, so only Gary, once again, Gary read the situation all wrong. Only, only just because I'm, I'm like, you know. No, we you are sad. Howard, the TV guys too. Oh, okay. No, well, I'll stop talking about it. I don't want to make you feel no, better. No, I mean, uh, Pete, do you want to learn? I, I feel better. Though. I, want, I, want to, I want to learn from this. Come you know? on, Rob. Wouldn't you want to hear every shit date you get to... on back on tape? <laughs> <laughs> if you want, I'll bring J.D. in to make you feel better. This is good. Millions he's, of people. he's worse on dates than you. <laughs> this is good, though. J.D.'s like this. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on dates that make this look like fucking yeah. Cinderella in the, the same book. Yeah. Uh, Come on. At least you're better off than J.D. Right. JD's like this. I don't care. Whatever. What? Uh, 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 I don't know. Uh, uh, what? Uh, 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 uh. Listen to me. I got the solution for you. I'm going to fix you. Don't worry. This is going to happen. Do you think there's no chance with Dinah anymore? Oh, no. The Dinah's gone. Mm. You don't want another date, Dinah. Mm. I could not do another day. It, oh. it, was, it was a lot of work trying wow. to, yeah, she did. you she... know, keep the conversation uh, going the whole time. And right. I just, I just don't think I could do it again. I hear That's you. Rough. Dinah just put a faster motor on her wheelchair. Yeah. 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 She got out of town here. Do you have roommates or? No, I actually live with, live, live, living at a home right now. Oh, okay. Um, but, uh, A lot of, a lot of uh, my classmates, you know, now that they're going back to school, they live at home, and they always say it like, I'm living at home, but it's like, yeah, but you're saving so much money, I'm so jealous. Yeah. That's that. Yeah. That's a good thing about it. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Uh, 
you get along with your parents? I do. I do. That's good. What? That must have been some burger. <laughs> it, it, let's put it this way. It ain't I was tiring listening to it. I want to I just go lay on the couch now. It isn't exactly The Bachelor. Oh, Pete, what are you thinking? Too. Listening to myself no, is horrifying. Live, 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 living at a home right now. Oh, okay. Um, uh, See, when you look like Brad Pitt, you can talk like this, and you'll be fine. Yeah, yeah the girls can't even it. hear you. You can yeah. get away with it. All right, listen. So, Dinah, God. I want to thank yeah. you. I'm going to now work with Pete a little bit. Thank you for putting up with me, by the way. I, so. I think, I think if you worked with him, you know, I don't think it's the it's, Tourette's. I think, I think if you worked with him on some, some social skills and how to go out on a date and how to talk to somebody, I think that would go a really long way because... I think there's just, he has something there. He just doesn't really know how to work it. I, okay, I know what to do, Dinah, and I want to thank you because actually now I know how to. Uh, I, Pete, I got this all figured out. Don't worry. Well, you're welcome. I'm glad I could right. help you figure all right. it out. Thanks, Dinah. Thank you. All right, now listen to me. I got this figured out. I listen. I, I got more of this tape, but hey, you have enough of that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> listen to me. If you want to see Pete ride the mechanical bull, that he was good at. <laughs> he did. He did ride the mechanical. He had a there better he relationship with the bull. Look at your TV screen. There's Ooh, Pete on the bull. I got to say, he's got the cowboy hat on. <laughs> 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 that I got to admit, you you did well. There's some place like that in New York. <laughs> it takes balls to get on that thing. Oh my goodness! It it's nice. over, Pete. That's it. <laughs> Pete <laughs> froze. <laughs> Yeah, Robin, do you ever walk around New York and see someone who looks like an asshole? That's where they go. <laughs> All right, so, Pete, here's what I figured out. I got this figured out. The way you're going to score with chicks, you just got to pretend you're me interviewing a, a chick. This okay. is going to be the key. So when you go on the date, you're no longer you. You're me. I'm you. You're Howard Stern of the Howard Stern Show. And now you're going to engage these girls in conversation. Okay. All you're going to do is ask questions about them. That's the only pressure you got to think up questions. Just ask questions. Think about Dinah. What's but her thing? She wants to be them. a lawyer. She wants to be a lawyer. So, yeah, Robin's right. So she wants to be a lawyer. Hey, so what type of lawyer you want to pr practice? Then let her talk for a while. Let her talk herself silly. These girls will talk for fucking two hours when you ask them a question. They're so starved for daddy. Well, actually, Howard, there's a little bit more to a conversation than just Hold on. One Would you let me let finish talk. my advice? This is man to man. All right. I'm, you, but you're can't, you can't him say, wrong. No, 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 man no. to man. Man to man. You're man. steering him wrong. She, <laughs> she's a girl. She doesn't know. Right. Listen to me. All right. Sorry. Listen, I'm no beauty. Huh? I, I get girls in bed. Here's what you do. Then when they talk for a while, you yeah. listen to them. And you pick up on whatever they're saying, and then you ask a follow-up question. So she goes, blah, 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 blah. You don't even have to listen to every word. You just, but you also then all of a sudden, give hear, some information about yourself. Because yes. there was a thing in the conversation when Dinah's talking to him, and she says, where do you live? He could have said, well, you know, where do you live? Do you have in your hell. own place? All right, you know, so. he never referred back. No, you so, should have so, said, so, so, can so I then, live with you? Here, so let's, <laughs> listen, I asked Miss How Howard TV to hang around. Oh. I know you ain't getting her. She's out of your league. She's out of my league. She's out of everyone in this room's league. No okay? one's getting her. No one's getting her yeah. unless, I don't know. Unless you're 49. And yeah, rich or something. Kind of effeminate. Right. She's going to come in. I'm going to ask her to role play. I'm going to say, hey, you're on a date with Pete. Ask her about herself. And stick to that. And then, like Robin says, okay. She says something like, you know, um, oh, yeah, I once interned for a TV show. Oh, yeah, I really enjoy my internship, you could say. Uh, you know, in fact, is, uh, I work with Scott, the engineer, that, that, you know, Jesus Christ, he's a, he's a real bear, you know, to work with. Something. You can mm -hmm. throw in something about yourself. Not too much. Yeah. And then get right back to interviewing her. All you got to do is interview these broads, and you will get a girlfriend. You do what we all do. Bear Scott, the engineer. Right. The right. You make yourself look better than other guys. I always put down other guys <laughs> when I'm on a date. I always go, oh, that guy's an asshole, this, guy, this kind of thing. Oh, yeah, Ganji's fat. <laughs> Sick all the time. <laughs> Fred doesn't say anything. <laughs> Benji, I don't know what he does. You know, he that kind of thing. people. Yeah. You understand? Oh, Artie's on heroin. <laughs> Fucking mess. <laughs> if I even see that a girl's a little bit interested in Artie right away. Oh, he's such a mess. Though. 
I mean, he's involved with that mother and the sister and the heroine. And even the, if know. there's a chance. Right. Even, yeah. I mean, I don't, I'm not going to make any other guy look good. All right. You're, the, you're God's gift to the world. These girls just don't realize it. Why do you think we're here? Yeah. <laughs> You understand what I'm saying? I understand. So when she walks yeah. in, I mean, become a new man. You're on a date with her. Where is that Miss Howard TV? Bring her in here, Ganji. All right. Let's pretend I never interviewed her. I need you to help me with an experiment. Look at this brush off. Yeah, all right. I'm Howard Stern. Well, you're, no, you're you. Don't, you. Don't, right? don't tell the girl you're Howard Stern. She'll have you committed. All right. Her name is, uh, what is your name again? Rebby. Rebby. I can't remember. I think it's Rebby. Right. Her Rebby, name's Re Re Rebecca. I need you to help me with Rebe. an experiment. I don't know how much of this you've been listening, okay? Yeah, I have. Okay. I'm trying to train this guy to at least ha have a conversation with a girl. Okay. All right? You're pretty intimidating, this and that. Would you pretend you're on a date, a dinner date, and he has to talk to you? Sure. All right. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Hey, Pete. Rebby, how you doing? Rebby, how are you? You're very beautiful, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. That's very sweet. You're welcome. So what made you get into uh, uh, this penthouse thing? Um, I've, I've never done penthouse. <laughs> oh. all right, give him a chance. He's warming up. This is all new. Go ahead. Um, I've done Playboy, though. You like is... this whole modeling career, then? Yeah. Yeah. What, 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 uh, what made you want to do it? Um, I thought that modeling was a way to be able to travel. I really like traveling, so. so I'm no freaking model. I can tell you that much. So. <laughs> I, have to, uh, I, have to, I have to give you credit for that. That's okay. I'm sure we'll have other stuff in common, right? Could be. Could what, be. Do you, what do you Could like be. to do? Kind of, kind of interesting, you know. I'm, I'm, a, I'm kind of a guy who likes to chill out, go, uh, go look at, uh, go look at sporting events and stuff, and listen to music. Just ask and, her questions. Uh, you're, oh, you're stuff, you're, now you're getting uh, caught up in you, and that never goes well. Yeah. You have nothing so, so, going on. So what? What? Uh, what do you? What do you? What do you like? Like musically and stuff. I listen to a lot of classic rock. I like Queen and the Beatles. Let me ask you, why are you always asking about music? Yeah, yeah this is question. one question. Forget the music. And I know you like you too. Listen, yeah. I got to play a piece of his date. Hold on a second. I got to interrupt. Listen, again with the music. Every minute with the music. Listen. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> this eating ain't pleasant. <laughs> got to learn how to chew with his mouth closed. <laughs> I like Queen a lot. I like yeah. Talking Heads. Her too. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I generally, I, I don't think I call myself a classic rock fan, but um, I don't know. I don't really have genres that I like. I just have like individual. Yeah. You know, but yeah. I don't know. Anything you can recommend to listen to? Well, like I said, I'm a, I'm a big YouTube fan. Oh, so. yeah. So, um, especially a couple albums. Which ones? Because they have a lot. Yeah. That they've done. Right, listen, that music thing is lame. These chicks don't care what kind of fucking music. Listen, ask only ask her questions. Stick to that and I get back to the date. So what okay. do you like to do? Like to hang out and stuff? And I don't usually go out, but I like to go to so Giants like games. like to drink? Do I You're not drink? listening. Yeah, you got to let her finish the question. <laughs> let her answer and then respond. Yeah. Um, I'm not a big drinker, but I like to go out occasionally. Do you like to drink? I like to go out. Not so much drink, but, uh, you know. Okay. What, yes. uh... Yes, you ran out of questions, didn't you? What else are you, uh... No, no, what is no. he gonna do? No, 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 no. Listen. Oh, listen, listen. Uh, <laughs> no, she's good. You, she's... Say to her, you could have said to her like this. Ready? Hey, I heard you talking to Howard before. That whole thing with your parents. How do you get along with them after they committed you to a hospital? She'll talk for fucking 20 minutes. That's true. She's waiting on load. <laughs> she needs someone. Do you think anyone's listening to her? These you, guys don't want to get in her pants. You're listening. And you spoke over a key thing. She said she likes to go to Giants yeah. games. A hot yeah. chick who likes Giants games. Get into... All right, listen to me. We got work to do. Oh, you got to do a lot of rehearsing with Pete. Yeah, you're going to get there. You were doing better. He was doing better work. with her than, than the other day. But it's still like a yeah. rat a tat tat. He's just asking questions. Yeah. He doesn't care what she's saying. Ask right. her how many sacks Tiki Barber had. <laughs> <laughs> I was I'm waiting not, for that. <laughs> I'm not in the room anymore. I'm going to send you back to your date with her. Okay. This beautiful Rebby. Now go ahead. So what made you become a Giants chick? Why do you like the Giants? Um. <laughs> no, you don't have to sound so angry about it. I was born in New York, and um, it's my favorite pastime to go to games and stuff. So you just decided to venture out to, uh, to the stadium? Hmm? 
That's, oh, that's, 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 that's pretty cool. Thank you. That's pretty cool. Uh, so why were you in a Looney Tunes bin? <laughs> why the fuck are you into the Giants? No, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. cool. Why does your mother think you're nuts? It'd be kind of cool if she actually agreed to go out with you after this. Pete, but, but happened what are you really yeah. interested in? Yeah, what do you like to ask girls about? You interested just, in her at all? Just uh, about 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 them, you know, about, yeah. about like what what uh you know. You know, here you are, you're a lonely guy, right? You finally got a girl. Let's let's ask her a few questions. Yeah, what do you really want to know? Um, you got big tits. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, looking yeah, at me—is there anything that makes you curious? That. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. Hey, now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Man, <laughs> kidding. I'm real no. curious. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Pete should be like, can I touch you? <laughs> Are you real? <laughs> Pete, all I'm saying is you got to give this some thought. Yeah. I think you're on your way. These girls are telling you you're not hideous. They're not saying it's your looks. They're not saying it's your Tourette's. It's you. They're saying you're not asking me questions. <laughs> I figured it out for you. Now all you got to do is pretend to be like a lawyer and they're on the witness stand. Ask them a couple of questions. No, that's what he's doing now. But he's uh, got to listen. See, that's Nobody the thing. wants to be interrogated. It's so hard to listen to a chick. It just, is. Just well, that's part of it, dude. Part of the exercise is today, because I'm going to set you up with another girl at some point. I'm going to. Okay. Don't lose faith. We're getting you Maybe. laid. But you got to be prepared the next time. That's why I'm having you practice with Rebby here. You're doing good. But no, really, he's not. Be honest is, with him. What is I'm not it? Doing good. She's You're not looking doing good. at Rebby. What's <laughs> the question you want to ask her? Yeah. Look at that girl. What do you want to ask her? You shave. No. <laughs> What's it like being perfect? <laughs> What's it like? But that's no, a good question. What is your question, Pete? So, What's it, your it, question? Do you, What's it like so, being you? I mean, how, how do you how do you go about your daily life? Uh, being Look, so attractive. Like how about that? saying that? That's, that's right. a good question. All right, good. Okay, all right. I'm yeah. sorry. I didn't mean yeah. to step in. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, a day in my life, I usually get up, check the internet, um, practice my piano, um, yeah. probably take... You get a piano? Yeah, I actually play piano. What do you like? Um, I play classical piano. My favorite composer is Chopin. Cool. Thanks. Cool. Don't say cool so much. Just say yeah, Chopin. You... How's a girl like you learn about Chopin? How, did, how does somebody like you get into classical piano like that? Oh, now you sound like a, a human being. Yeah. That's pretty good, yeah. <laughs> or well, maybe you'd even like to hear her play. That's yeah. pretty make you want to do that? Chopin piece? You seem maybe, like, I could, uh, maybe I could beat off while you play Chopin. <laughs> <laughs> you seem like... You seem like so you the social the type. You, you, don't, you, don't, you don't seem like the girl who uh, sits inside and plays guitar. Uh, piano, then, is what? Why, uh, why piano? Oh, well, my parents enrolled me in lessons from when I was really young and I actually went to the fame school and I wanted to go to Juilliard and pursue music. You look pretty smart anyway, so, so it looks like you, you can do that sort of thing. Thank what? You. Pete. Wow. Pete. She understood Pete. that? Wow. <laughs> ask, her if she likes, ask her if she likes a 13-inch hard conk. Right. No, stop it. Now you just kidding. Uh, right, right, right. Dude, feet. I got to tell you, take that why out of your uh, your yeah. vocabulary. Yeah. Now, it, every, why is a challenge? Why, Chopin? No, oh, take really? Take the why. Yeah, stop asking people why they do things. Tell her you have a piano up at your apartment and you want to see her play it. <laughs> And then try to find some guy with an apartment or a piano. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it to you. No, listen, if Ask you, her if she likes being stared at. If you, yeah. could sit, if you could sit through her... That's to, another one of my problems. If you could sit through her playing Staring. the piano, man, you're in. All right, listen. Pete, already you've improved 50%. Uh, I think so. Yes. Compared to that date, you've improved 50%. By the time you're doing your next date, I'm going to have you up to 100%. Who else can we have in practice with? I'm going to have. A, I'm gonna do a couple of easy ones. Yeah. Next person you're going to practice with, this is on tomorrow's show, you're going you're gonna to act like you're on a date with Wendy to read. Hard. Now, the reason I chose her... That should be a slam dunk. It'll be a slam dunk. That's going to be the easiest... She's going to appreciate anything. You yeah. mean, easy one. That's going to be easy. Then I'm going to stick you in a room with Lisa G, who loves to talk about herself. Yeah, she might be too like, hard. Like, like, no, no, she's easy. Really? You ask Lisa anything, she She'll can talk for go. an hour. She'll just go, yeah. You know? And I know you might actually even get Wendy the read. But you might need to take no dose. But I'm telling you, if okay. Rebe's tough. Rebe is tough because, <laughs> you know, she's kind of intimidating. You it's know what exciting. I mean? Yeah. 
I mean, look, none of us are big shots here. We'd all be nervous talking to this yeah. chick. Yeah. You, you, and you, got, did, you did all right you with You got to know how to do yeah. And she's actually, like, Very it was sweet, over, uh, yeah. Right. She's got, she's a giant fan who's into Chopin, piano. She's giving you a million ways to right. ask about herself. Chopin. She how did you, I, I fun, you just said, well, man, how do you, did, 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 you took formal training? How long? You know, this kind of stuff. Right. So she's going to fall yeah, in love with even, you. I don't know that much about the classics, but, but, you know, it seems hard to play that stuff. I'd love to see you play. Yeah. And then you got to sit through her playing. That's going to suck. Hey, <laughs> look at her. He'll be well, able to do it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> He's a music fan. I can tolerate. Yeah, you can tolerate sitting there listening to that music. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Chopin. You could say yeah. Chopin's my favorite yeah. vodka. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know you know what? Guy. Ask her he if she likes. Ask her if she likes guys who um, go to dinner with her and chew with their mouth open. <laughs> yeah, I got to work on that one. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. Uh, thank you, Robbie. All right, thanks, y'all. Thanks Good for luck, Pete. See you later. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Bye. Can I pretend to be on a date with Rebby? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Did Pete. You just got a kiss. I knew it. Mm. Just because you acted interested. I like you. How about that? Yeah. How about that? She liked it. Do you think? Did you just come in your pants? Get through I did to not. You? All right, good. I did not. <laughs> did any of this get through to you? Are yes. you hearing what we're saying? He, he's got it. It did. Like shit through a goose, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I actually. Right. Tomorrow I'll have you interview Wendy. You know, you'll talk to her. Like, you'll pretend you're on a date with her. You're not going out with her. And then uh, Lisa G. And then you're going to be ready. Then we're going to set you up on a date, and you're not going to blow it. Oh. You just need to practice. You've been so rusty. It, it wasn't well, it wasn't the fact that I had Therese at all. No. no. Zero. That has not been holding you back. I now figured out what's holding you back. I mean, you. that's good news, right? Yeah. That's not, good. Not Therese. I, I mean, sure. Yeah. I, 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 I can think, think of Quick, myself. Quick, I'm a hot chick. You're on a date <laughs> with me. Ask me some. What's up? What's going on? Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> How are you? That's rough, man. I saw you uh, riding the mechanical bull over there. Um, looked like you wanted to say hello to You're me. You're so beautiful. Thank you. You know? Thank you. Why do you want to talk to me? <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Oh. Okay, listen, Pete. I'm going to do the harmonies. I got that Y thing again. You know, it's, yeah, it's Ralph, stupid. go ahead. And then Yucko's yeah. coming in. Go ahead, Ralph. Yes. Um, I have some advice for Pete. I think while he's still working over there on the Howard Stern Show, he should stock up on porno because he is, he's not getting laid. <laughs> It's a lost cause. What's with your voice? He's sick. Is he sick? Yes. Yeah, I got a little... I don't know. I don't feel sick, though. I don't know. I keep... Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Whatever. Stay but quiet. really, Pete, how do you blow it with a chick in a wheelchair? <laughs> I mean, that's almost impossible. I know, man. It's all right. He blew Kicking it. Kicking myself now. What happened between... Seriously, what happened between... You were on the show. You were all amped up. You are handing out roses. You were sort of fun and stuff. And then you completely shut down on the date. I froze up, man. He froze up. Mm. You can't give a guy a hamburger. Well, yeah, you know what, how's too? he going to get unfrozen? You know, Howard, when you're sending this guy out on a date, frozen. send him out with, to, to a bar and drinks. I mean, who gets laid with uh, eating a hamburger? Well, Ralph, it, the girl had to go back, All and right. we had to get it taped, and right. so, so he, he got a lunch. Who knew he didn't know how to eat? Yeah, but, you know. <laughs> you could pretty I mean, much tell. It should be a martini lunch. No, but yeah, that, from that, now on, you, 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 you just drink. That yeah. audio sounds like when, when, like, on the animal planet, like, lions make a kill. <laughs> and they're right. You don't even know. I, I, mean, you, I mean, some of it. They're some eating of a wildebeest. Really... <laughs> ripping at the shreds. All right. Don't eat. Right. Drink. That one episode where the lions take down an some, elephant. Some yeah. of that conversation was brutal. Yeah, oh. preferably have the girls drink. Yeah, yeah you need them to drink. <laughs> we have yeah. something in common, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. What's happening, like a disability and something right, like that. Right, right. Well, that, that so, actually... I think we can, uh, we can relate to each other, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> yeah. Well, I definitely understand. Oh, I took my and I also just got enchilada sauce all over me. Uh-uh. <laughs> what, uh... So you said you um, were diagnosed when you were like 10? 10 years old, yeah. Wow. Yeah. What did you think about it then? Was oh. it hard or did you not really? Nobody knew, nobody really knew what it was. Yeah. So, hmm. um, yeah. Um. Nobody really knew. Uh, 
I thought it was like schizophrenia or something like that. Or, uh... All right, listen to me. I need a drink. You're on the. You're, you got it. You're you're almost there. That's great to listen to. That's you, fantastic. You, it's fantastic. <laughs> listen to me. This ain't gonna be easy. That might be the funniest. Thing. Are, you, are you crying? I'm laughing so hard I can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the missing God. thing is booze. That's so great, man. Uh, Pete, listen to me. Um, oh, God. You are a charming guy. I love you. I want to <laughs> see, see you get... But I, I do. I've really learned to love you because when you first came here, I didn't know you. I didn't know what the fuck your story was. And then I got to know you, and I love you. You are a charming guy. You just got to have some confidence. What is your evidence? <laughs> and, and what did you say, Robin? I said, what is your evidence of <laughs> What did she say? What, what is, is your evidence, evidence of that? She's twirling oh, uncontrollably. Oh. Yeah. What do you want? Sal's got advice? Uh, you can't be. I, I, I think I got something good. How about we give uh, Pete an earpiece and feed him the lines? No. No, no, no. no. He's got to learn to fly on his own. Impossible. Impossible. He's got two broken wings. <laughs> <laughs> Cyrano de Bergerac over here. Put him in a cage? Yeah. All right. Listen, no, Pete. No, really. You're telling Pete he's a charming guy. What is your evidence? Because I've talked to Pete on the show, and I know he's a good guy. <laughs> And he is going to... We gonna, heard the real Pete. There is a girl for every guy. <laughs> Pete, tomorrow you're going to be on a pretend date with Wendy the Retard. We're going to start out slow. <laughs> you're going to ask her a couple of questions. That's going to be... You, you talk to her. Okay. That's all you're missing. It wasn't your Tourette's and it wasn't your looks. That's the good news. That's her, the good news. Her her interests will be different than Rebby's. Right. Yes. Yep. That's okay. <laughs> Right. What do you like doing? It was a first date. <laughs> Can I make another suggestion, Howard? Don't keep asking what kind of music she likes. <laughs> <laughs> you got, I hate to say this, it sounds a little scummy, but you got to lie your balls off, too. That's you right. got to bullshit. Absolutely. The, Sal's got it right, Pete. No girl would be with me they, if they knew the real me. You got to you gotta lie your balls off. Right. And they believe it. Is that what you got to do? Yeah. Yes. His wife knows the real right. him now. Yeah, yeah, look now, at his poor now wife. Now his wife, trapped. his wife married him. He got got the real Sal now. And she wants to fucking she kill him. She can't get out. Right. Yeah, look at look at him. look at Benji. Benji right. gets laid, right? Yeah, and Benji I'm, gets laid. You're better looking than Benji. I was at a strip club one night, Howard, and this beautiful girl, Pete. I swear to God, I swear on my children. Uh, she comes up to me. I see Benji throwing the wraps on the chicks. Right. All of a sudden, this beautiful stripper comes up to me, and I want to brag on Benji's behalf. I even want to bullshit for my friends to get get him laid. And I go, I point to Pen Benji and I say to the girl, hey, do you know who that guy is? She goes, duh, he wrote Madagascar. <laughs> He's good. He's good. Now Benji, Benji could teach you. And that was it? Yeah. That's it. It was in? Yeah. I came up with the part where the thing says, I got to move it, move it. It's my favorite line. <laughs> I once made out with a chick in L.A. She was a German in. chick. I told her I wrote Jurassic Park. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just... That, that, that Even bullshit. like I see, like, the, you like so to wear, you played out on him. You like to wear mi military outfits. Yeah. Tell them you're in the army, and they, yeah. you, you know. You, so you, you played special, out on special forces. Uh, anyway, well, I got to get to Yucko. How is, one, one more line of bullshit. You know what I do too, Pete? You have to do put oh, fake celebrity names in your BlackBerry, and then have your buddy call that number. He does. Like, like I put Lars Ulrich in my BlackBerry. Oh. So if I'm hanging out with a chick, my phone rings. Go, oh, it's Lars yeah, Ulrich. You're, 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 you're talking advanced stuff. Really advanced. Lars Ulrich. You're talking grand larceny. Quick, quick question for. You, Pete. So the guys are telling me that you went to do a comedy show with Shuli, and there was a girl there, and she was talking to you, and she wanted to take you home to her house. What happened? She, uh, apparently she liked my stick. No, but why didn't you show. go with her? What, what, what? I probably blew it. <laughs> no, but, I mean, did, what, but what made well, you, like, when she said, hey, let's hang out, let's go, what, what went through your mind? I, I I think she might have been playing around or kidding around or something like that. Nobody you know? thought she was. I did though. Huh? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He could tell me. I blew it. Uh, you know? uh, maybe not. Maybe maybe you saw some, some he, something there. He said he was afraid to go to a stranger's house, but well, you, know, you want to know that, that that's understandable. <laughs> get over it. <laughs> exactly. You got to get over it. You're gonna have to go to some, it, you're gonna have you know? to go to some stranger's house at some point. No, but yeah, it, you know where, where uh, do people get laid at strangers' yeah. houses? Totally. I've gotten <laughs> laid at total. Yeah. I've met people and, and they were total strangers, and I got laid yeah. at their house. You ever go to a house and you were afraid if you were ever gonna get out alive? Uh, I, never, oh. I never thought about it. On the road, that he's got a point. Like I've gone to houses with chicks. On the road, and they're like, "That's that's my boyfriend right. shining his gun." And by the man. way, Pete, you're not alone. I mean, even Yucko can't get laid at all, and he's here, and he's got a clown outfit. He's happy. Yeah, look at his handicap. <laughs> right. All right. So anyway, you'll be all right. You've got to learn to ask questions. That's it, and you will be on the road to getting laid.
Okay. That's my advice. All right. I see it as a positive. I will take that and... Uh, All right. Yeah. Thank you, Pete. You know, it's a good bullshit when she says Chopin makes it, you go, mine is Stravinsky or something. <laughs> right. When you uh, do the pretend date with Wendy the Retard, yeah. first question, what's it going to be? Why are you the way you are? No. Uh, why again? Too vague. Why? Too vague. No, why? She Say, retarded. She can't hey, I heard, I heard. What you... are you into? What no, are you no, 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 no. You go like this. <laughs> hey, Wendy. I heard on the show you like to stick tomatoes up your ass. Oh, God, help me. Why do you like that so much? See, that's crazy. That shows you know something about her. Howard, why, why? are you? You're going to keep him from ever no, getting I'm laid. No, I'm not. You are. What's it like when a tomato's in your ass? Does your bush have any shit in it? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't listen to them, please. I know that Wendy's nobody to practice I on. hear your enormous bush sometimes gets shit caught in By the way, Pete, you're getting advice from guys who never get laid, right. so don't uh, <laughs> just realize. We Dude, just think we're a little better than you. Dude, Not on, much, yeah. but a little better. We're on the radio. Yeah. <laughs> no reason I get laid. I got this job. We got Trust me. Get us laid. I wasn't getting laid either. <laughs> But yeah. guess what, Pete? You're on the radio. Yeah, so now you got something going on. Right. All we got to do is tune you up a little bit, and you'll be getting laid. <laughs> Slight tune up, and you're there. Okay? You hear what I'm saying? I'm actually uh, kind, of, kind of impressed that, that none of this is about my Tourette's. This no. Is cool. Tourette's isn't your problem. You have other problems. Because, listen, quick, two seconds. I've had this problem all my life with, 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 the, with the Tourette's getting in the way of everything. So th this, is, this is cool that I'm actually... Looked I mean, at as being like a normal guy. That's awesome. Honestly, I'm not even sure you have Tourette's. It doesn't seem like you all that much of a Tourette's. You don't yell out dirty words or anything. It could be a lot worse. Yeah, you know, be. you could be one of those maniacs who yells out the N-word when you're in a room full of black people. Could be, yeah. Yeah. So, you, see, uh, you ever see these guys? I, I, it's, it, the guy walks in a room full of black people and says, nigga, nigga. That's you know, sallow. You know, I mean, that's crazy. <laughs> You know what I mean? So, honey, who's your favorite composer? Guinea! <laughs> so, you're way ahead of the game. All right, now get out of here because uh, I can't spend the whole show on you. Yeah. Oh, uh, we could, but... Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, we could, but... <laughs> I promise Yucko we he could have a five. Fun. All right, man. All right, thanks. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> You'll be all right. Don't worry. Whew, Let's I think... love to hear him eat. Let's think of more reasons mm. to get Rebby back in there. <laughs> That is fun. How do you think Pete did? He's cute. He's just really shy. I think he needs to work on making girls feel more special. Because girls are easy to please. I think he'll do all right. Howard's a good coach. Sometimes. Nope. <laughs> For the most part. Was he making you uh, feel awkward? Pete? Yeah. No, no. He just he cut me off a few times. Yeah, he doesn't listen. That's okay. Pete, so the date didn't go too well. Didn't go well, but I got a lot, a lot of lot of good advice from a big guy in there. Yeah, so. what what do you take from this advice? So, what, are gonna, uh, what are you gonna do differently? Well, I'm gonna apply it. You know, I'm gonna definitely uh, come back with the positive, more more uh, more more uh, um, more aggressive. You know. What about lying? They suggested lying. S suggested lying, lying as as being part of it, and uh, I'll I'll take that. I'll, I'll take that into account, too. And now, you I'll, practice... I'll definitely a, bullshit some, some stuff, and, and I'll, see, uh, I'll see what I can do. Uh, you practiced a little bit with Revy. Did that uh, help boost your confidence at all? Uh, it did. It did. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a little... I'm a little, um, um, I'm a little more, more confident now. Yeah, so. Howard said you're... Uh, now he thinks you're, like, halfway there. Yeah, it's... It, it, it seems like I, I can I can uh, I can ask ask the, the right questions, you know. And fucked up, Pete. It seems oh. like uh, I fucked up. It seems like when, I when, when up. Howard said that, you know, it's really probably not your Tourette's. You seem to uh, seem to almost take like a weight off your shoulders. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was happy that that it that it that it wasn't my Tourette's. So that was actually something else. So, so it's not the Tourette's you have to work on. It's just you know you got to come out of your shell. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I think, you know, I think there's there's a chance there, you know. And you have some more, uh, you have another uh, practice session tomorrow. Yeah. With Wendy. Yeah, so we'll we'll see tomorrow how, how, that, how that goes, you know. Practice makes perfect. Yeah. All right, man, I wish you luck. Yeah, no problem, man. No problem. Hey, this is Medicated Pete, and um, I'm about to uh, embark on my date on the date. So.
so. You ready to go? Peace out. Let's go. All right. I'm just uh, taking a stroll down Manhattan. And uh, beautiful day out here today. It's kind of cool outside, but you know. But it's nice for November. Yeah, it's actually nice out. It's not, it's not, it's not too cold, so you know, working and, out. In Philly, it was like 70 degrees yesterday. Thank you. You can, uh, you got to Yeah. You good? Thanks. Yep. Cool. All right. Thank you. And there's our drink menu as well. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. You get yeah. gonna get the monster burger? I think so. Oh. Yeah. Is a half pound a lot? I don't. Um. I don't know. I guess like quarter pounder is what. Uh, that is a lot. What you already always hear at McDonald's and stuff. <laughs> Yeah. It is a lot. I don't know if I'll be able to finish it. Mm -hmm. I guess that's why they call it the monster. What? Hmm. Yeah. Do you cook at all? I'm not a big cook. <laughs> How about you? I'm a huge cook, but guys uh, never are. Uh, so it's, it's not just <clears throat> you, it's, it's everyone. I'm a huge cook. Sorry. Uh, that's okay, like I said. I do. I think I'm mad. Like one guy who liked to cook ever, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not too much into cooking. So. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, but, yeah. How long have you been skiing? Uh, about 20 years. Oh my goodness, yeah. so, long time. Yeah. It's cool. <clears throat> oh. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I like a monster burger. Monster burger? You want yeah. the medium well? Yeah. You want cheese and everything on it? Uh, you have, um, you have like Swiss? Um, we have uh, pepper jack or American or cheddar? Uh, American too. Okay. Yeah. We talked about some sort of vegetable thing because I'm vegan, so. Okay. Do you want the um, vegetable burrito? Yeah, I think so, except with no, uh, none of the sour cream and cheese. Okay. Sure. Anything dairy. <laughs> You got it. I went to a huge school, and I really enjoyed it, but now that I'm in the smaller environment of law school, <coughs> I like that a lot. Yeah. So. Yeah. But I, I think when I was coming out of high school, I just wanted to be, like, anonymous for a while, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But, um... This is giant. What's up? This is giant. So I wanted want to give you my uh, my contact stuff so. too. Okay, cool. Um, or you know, you can even if you, you have my email, so if you just drop me an email, okay, then I will have your information. Okay. We'll do that. We'll do that. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Close quarters. Huh? Yeah. Do you have roommates or? No, I actually live with living live, living at a home right now. Oh, okay. Um, but, uh, a lot of a lot of uh, my classmates, you know, now that they're going back to school, they live at home and yeah. they always say it like. I'm living at home, but yeah. it's like, yeah, but you're saving so much money. I'm so jealous. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's a good thing about it. Though. Yeah. Um. Or not. Uh, 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 
Do you get along with your parents? I do. I do. That's good. So you said you went to classic rock? That, that, that's that's that type of music? Um, I like Queen a lot. I like yeah. Talking Heads. Um, I don't know. I generally, I, I don't think I call myself a classic rock fan, but um, I don't know. I don't really have genres that I like. I just have like individual. Yeah. You know, but yeah. I don't know. Anything you can recommend to listen to? Well, like I said, I'm a, I'm a big YouTube fan. Oh so. yeah. So, um, especially a couple albums. Which ones? Because they have a lot yeah, that they've done, yeah, right? Yeah, but, but two of my favorite albums are um, Joshua Tree and um, Octoon Baby. Hmm. Yeah. Two, uh, probably two of, their, two, of their, two of their better albums. Okay. Is yeah. there, like, stuff from those that I would recognize? Like, songs that I would know? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I will check the check those um, out. Uh, uh, Think you're gonna finish it? <laughs> um. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's just big. I know. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. We have something in common, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's happening, like a disability and something like right. that. Right, right. So, I think we can, uh, we can relate to each other, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Well, I definitely understand. I took and I also just got enchilada sauce all over me. <laughs> uh, uh, but, How you guys doing? Hi. Pretty good. How's lunch? Lunch is good. Lunch is lunch great. Is good. You guys going to want to ride the pole? I think so. All right. Well, mm-hmm. when you're done eating, come on over and we'll get you all set up. Oh, sure. man. All right. all right. Oh, wow. I think this might have been a better idea before we ate. You should have done this before, huh? <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, um, I don't know. I want to give it a try. So. It's going to be flying around the bowl. I know. <laughs> oh, man. Well, let me know when you're ready to uh, try it out. Yeah. I guess so. Um, let's make it not. Uh, we can go give it a shot. You want to? Yeah. All right. Let's go for it. Yeah. Okay, yep, I think so. Just you scooch up on the saddle at all? I could try. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hold on. Let me... There you go. Yes. You can obviously hold on with two hands. Oh, okay, that would be. If you want to ride a real rodeo, you want yeah. underneath. Under. Oh, yep. that might not work well. But that's one okay. way to try it. Okay. All right. All right, thank you. And if and when you decide to fall off or bail out, Decide, yeah. Well, I'm not going to throw you off. Okay, so thanks. If and when you decide to bail out, mm-hmm. just fall normal. All right. Okay? <laughs> okay. Uh, see how this one looks on. All right. I'm going to mess up your hair. I know. <laughs> That's pretty good. All right. All right. Take your word for it. Bull rider, are you ready? I am ready. I can deal with this. Right. I'm doing good. Ah! <laughs> you doing all right? Yeah. I don't think I can 
do one-handed. Thank you. Very All good. right, thanks. You think you can do it? Uh, I'll try to give it a go. Want the hat? Sure. Yeah. All right. Gotta, you gotta do it up. Sure. Get into the look. Yeah. Very nice. Sure. Yeah. Okay. We'll give him a little help. <laughs> you did great. Thank you. Yeah. Am I holding on to something or what? Yeah, there's little straps. Look. When the bull head is up, you yeah. lean in. When the bull head is down, you lean back. That's it. When the bull head's up, lean in. What's that? Okay. When the bull head's up, lean in. Yeah, when the bull head's up this way, I'll yeah. show you. We'll go real it slow. Kinda, it kind of it kind of makes I'll, sense. I'll guide you. You'll be all right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> bull rider, are you ready? Ready. All right. Finished our, our date here in Midtown and um, and everything went well on my part. Had a good meal and uh, did a little bull riding, which was fun. And uh, give a good time yourself. I did. It was good. Did you have fun? I did. Awesome. I did. All right. I did. It was definitely cool. Mm -hmm. it was definitely cool. Super fan trivia contest. Guys, are you ready for this? Oh yeah. Oh, I'm absolutely pumped. Been listening all my life. I'm ready, I'm ready. We're a little worried about my age, but I'm ready. Anyone nervous? I'm very nervous. Why are you nervous? Uh, just being in the studio with Howard. You think it's gonna be tough being in front of him, in front of Robin and Hardy, all the guys? Yeah. What about Matt and Steve? Is that a factor? I would have said that before, but uh, Adi just came in here with and Gary and talked to us. Like, I mean, so I'm not that nervous. Calms just, your nerves a little bit. Yeah, the only, I mean, the only one I haven't really seen is Howard and Robin. We've met everybody else, so I think it's I've... absolutely a factor. You can, you know, sit at home and get every question right, but when you get under the lights and that sort of thing, you'll do stupid stuff. Yeah. All right, guys. Good luck today. Thank Thanks, you. man. All right, the following super fans are true super fans. They have gone through the mill, Robin. Okay. Uh, they were all part of Mutt's super fan roundtable show. They had to compete against other super fans in order to get here on the final destination to find out who the true super fan of the year is. Let me introduce you to Matt, Steve, and Gina. Hello, everyone. Morning. Hi. Morning. Morning. Anybody have any nerves? Matt, how are your nerves? 
Why am I not hearing you? Once again, I have screwed up. All right, go ahead. Why am I not? Uh, what, what, talk about your nerves. Are you nervous? You know what? I was nervous walking in here, like outside, walking into the building. But once I got inside, everyone was so cool. Like Adi and Gary came into the green room, talked to us. Right. Adi gave us a DVD, signed it. Match from Boston, I take it. When you say Adi, all yes. right. Steve, what Artie. about you? How are the nerves? Uh, doing pretty good. You're doing all right. Good. Not, oh, absolutely. Not a big deal to be on the radio. Yeah, it's old hat. Okay. Uh, Gina, what about you? Hi. Hi. Nerves Hi. are shot. Nerves are shot. A little bit Done. nervous. Yeah. Try to stay calm. This is a big deal. This is for $5,000. Matt, what do you do for a living? Are you independently wealthy or could you use $5,000? I could use five grand. I, uh, I own a snack distribution business for Utz Potato Chips. Oh, nice. Um, I hear you guys make a pretty good living. Yeah, it, it goes good. Yeah, it's it's all gluten free too, Robin. All the chips are gluten free. Yeah, I like the unsalted Uts. Yeah, they're very Robin good. Robin does not eat salt unless she's in France. And I got a I got a I baby on the eat way. Salt in France? You, on your French fries? They do not salt the French fries right. in France. I keep telling you that. Good for you, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Matt, um, I wish you luck today. Steve, I'll get back to you in a minute. Steve, what about you? What kind of living do you make? I'm a photographer. I run two moto photos in Jersey. So uh, portrait photography, digital imaging, that sort $5, of thing. $5,000, that would come in handy. Yeah. What would you use the money for if you win? Uh, buy somebody an iron lung or All right. kids on vacation, <laughs> something to that Gina, effect. what about you? I'm a human resources consultant. Uh, you know, business. you make a lot of money. Uh, not, in, not in this economy. Five thousand bucks is going to be a nice little prize. Going to help a whole lot. I want to thank our friends at Beck's Beer for the five thousand dollar prize, and let's find out a little bit about our competitors. Matt, you went on Mutt Show how many weeks, months ago? Uh, it was like a month ago, and I got on against another guy, and I kind of lucked out because the other guy got a bunch wrong, and I got like four right. I see. So, so you did okay. Yeah, I, I good enough to win. Good enough to win and be qualified for this super fan contest. Yeah. Yep. All right. And um, make sure you uh, keep an eye on Steve. He's staring at me like a uh, mental patient. All right. <laughs> all right. Matt, listen to me. You have... It's all right, Steve. You can stare at me. Believe me. <laughs> when I look in the mirror, I stare at it, too. <laughs> How long have you been a fan of the Howard Stern show? Um, My father used to tape the Channel 9 show in the early 90s. That was the first time I was really aware of you. Right. And um, w when you came on BCN in Boston, probably around 94, I started listening to you then. So anything before 94, you're probably a little shaky on. Uh, most likely, but I mean, a lot of stuff you have talked about over the past 10 years, so, you know. Steve, when you hear a guy started listening in 94, what does that indicate to you? Is he an easy uh, opponent? I, I laugh at him. You do. When did you start listening? Uh, I've actually been listening since NBC. NBC uh, years, wow. Literally in the past 15 years, I think I've missed one show. One show. Yeah. Maybe, maybe two. Gina, do you laugh at a guy who's only been listening since 94, or are you in the same boat? Uh, no, I've been listening since WNBC, since you came to NBC. So you have a real uh, distinct advantage over Matt, don't you? I do, but I'm very nervous. Well, Matt, what's the problem? Your headphone's not working? It's going, I can hear you in and out. Yes, well, that's what usually happens around here. <laughs> Scott's been setting up for about two months. and <laughs> I don't want to get him and, in trouble. And there's always a problem. All right, let's get back to you, Matt. I hope this doesn't distract you too much, even though everyone's working on your headphones while I talk to you. But the show moves on, as you know. It's a very professional show. Is that a little better in your headphones now? Yep, yeah, so far, so okay, far good. Okay, good, all right. Um, let's uh, talk about uh, the fact that uh, you once went to see Artie at a comedy show. You're such a fan, you went to uh, support Artie. Seven years ago, a comedy connection in Boston. And Artie yelled at you during the show, isn't that right? <sighs> yeah, I was drunk, and uh, it was right after that Tiger Woods bet that he made. Uh, where he bet five grand Tiger Woods wouldn't win. <laughs> right, right, right. And I kept, I, I kept yelling out Tiger Woods. I was being annoying. I yelled out dirty work. I yelled out mad TV. And then you were like, dude, it was funny the first time. Uh, you wouldn't like it if I kept calling your girlfriend the C word. And uh, wow. that, that was when we first started dating. She's here, actually. But uh, As a super fan, is it a great thing when Artie says you wouldn't like it if I called your girlfriend the C word? In other words, that's the greatest acknowledgement to get to some interaction with Artie. Oh, I was thrilled just to, just to get on his radar. Right. But, she, I mean, she was pissed off at me for a while. So like, heckling Artie, yeah, she probably thought you were a douchebag. Oh, right? Right. I can't believe she stayed with me for the seven years. But heckling Artie was... Was kind of a good move because you got interaction between you and Artie. Oh, yeah. I still talk about it to this day. And that's every super fan's <laughs> need to somehow get involved with the show. That's how much of a loser I am. Uh, you say some of the things you love about the show. One in particular is Eric the Midget. Uh, you gotta ha make Eric... If you stay on after this contract's up, you gotta have an Eric 102. I love <laughs> Eric the Midget. Why is Eric Midget 
Eric the Midget, so controversial. There are people, I read the email every day. There are people who love Eric the Midget and people who hate Eric the Midget. There's almost no in-between. What is it you love about Eric the Midget? Because I'm in your camp. Uh, you know, I think Jimmy Kimmel says it best when he's like, the way Eric gets on the phone and talks to Howard as if he's an equal and yells at him, and it's like, there's awkward silences. I mean, I could listen to it all day. I, I go on YouTube and listen to, there's some guy that puts up clips of every time he calls in. Right. I sit there for hours at night <laughs> listening to clips of, of Eric the Midget bitch about this and that. I mean, Eric, do you hear this? You're getting accolades from a super a fan. fan. You yeah. have a fan. Thank you, Mike. It's That's Matt. Hey, Eric, I love you. I love you. Thank you. Thank I, I love. Thank you for giving me an awkward silence. I mean, is that your favorite when he just kind of it takes him a long time to rev up and say something? This is as big as if John Lennon came from the dead and talked to me. Wow. I mean, uh, John Lennon, Paul McCartney, Eric the Midget, and Howard Stern, Adi Lang. Are you? Are you? Are, were you ever a part of his website when he was doing his? Uh, I, I forget what it was called. I'm, but... I'm not that big of a loser to go on right. to stick him, but. Right. Oh yeah, when he was doing that a uh, um, right. American Idol. Show? I was friends with him on MySpace, and then. And you got booted? I, I, I sent him an email about something, and he sent me this big message about how I'm, I'm cleaning up my friends, and you're one of them that I'm cleaning up. <laughs> this long email. I'm like, so he threw you off MySpace? Yeah, he, and wow. then I, I sent him another request, and he and he just wouldn't answer it. Like, he knows who I am. Like, wow. Eric, will you, will you acknowledge me now, and can I be your friend? I, I love you. Yeah, I have no problem with your friend request. <laughs> Watch me again. All right, Eric, and uh, flying with the balloons, that is my, that's my dream come true. That is my dream come true. A Please lot of people say that. fly with balloons. Do you tell him that in the email? That's when he gets in. Well, email. you know, he went through my pictures, and I do have a picture of balloons. Right. And, uh, and he, he put under it, these will never be attached to me, <laughs> dot, 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 capital letters, ever. Ever. <laughs> uh, Eric, you can see your fans who love you even get burned by you. You are very difficult to be a friend with. Silence. I really don't think I am. All right. Uh, Eric, but before I move on, because this is a big contest, I know you were on hold for a while. Did you have something you wanted to say? Yes, I was on hold to say sorry to Artie for last week. Ah, wow, that's very nice. Apology accepted, Eric. Thank you. Wow, that's a big deal. You know, Eric had been a little rough on Artie because Eric was looking forward to making his stand-up debut. Well, no, 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 no. That was the original reason. But... I was getting one side of a two-sided story, and the one side I was getting was making it sound like Artie was ripping. All it right, you know what? Even Matt is having a good time right now, and he loves it, and he's he's he's, he's felling as you as well, you tell your story. But uh, this is about the super fans. This is about the super fans. And Eric, I'm going to say that was awfully big of you to call in and apologize to uh, Artie. Artie, you do accept the apology. Absolutely, and I would never rip anybody off. I'm very professional. What are you eating right now, Artie, so people know? <laughs> Bacon and eggs. Bacon and eggs. Oh. Eric, accept me. Matt Ryan, I love you. Yeah, I will, and before he lets me go, good luck to you in this contest. Hey, thanks, Eric. All right, what about the rest of you? Steve, are you an Eric the Midget fan, or are you one of those people that just can't stand when Eric calls in? I love to hate him. He's you just do. so ungrateful for everything you've done to him. Just, just annoying. So Eric, he's annoying. The annoying midget. There you have it. Yeah, right. I mean, if he said thanks once in a while, I, I'd be a lot better with him. Did a call like today do, earn a lot of points for Eric with you? Uh, absolutely, in the hate column. Again, first of all, he wished Matt good luck. Who cares about mm. Matt? You know, right. it's all about oh. me. Thanks, Eric. Gina, are you a fan or not a fan of Eric the Midget segments? How can you not be a fan of him? You I like mean, it. even if you hate him, you have to be a fan of him. Right. He's all right. great. Eric, uh, those are good, uh, those good reactions from the super fans. And we'll talk to you again at some point. He'll be mad at me that I just hung up on him. Uh, you are also, uh, Matt, to finish up, you are a, uh, you got to meet Hank the Angry Dwarf before he died, which is a huge thing. Yeah, yeah. To meet him was really special. It was like a week before he died. Right. And uh, you uh, have a girlfriend who is seven months pregnant. You're not marrying her? You're just going to knock her up and uh, not marry her? Well, we've been together for eight years. It's like we're married. We've lived, Why we've won't lived... you marry her? Because neither one of us believe in marriage. Uh, oh. she, she never really has. I had you talking for ten years about how not getting married, and then 
But I mean, I don't know. He right. left you high and dry, right? right. Well, you know, <laughs> we're, we're in love, and uh, she's here. She's seven months pregnant. We're gonna name him Jacoby. Why not Howard? I mean, why? I, do... You know what? I said that, and she uh, she scoffed at the idea. Like, really? She didn't want to do it. I don't know. But, you know, I don't understand why more super... I'm talking about super fans. Why, why wouldn't they name their children Howard? Emily, if you're listening, I mean, Howard Stern himself is saying it, so... Yeah, they, really, I request that. All right, let's find out about Steve. Matt, thank you and wish you luck today. Thanks. Steve, uh, similarly, you are a super fan. You went on Much Show how many weeks, months ago? Again, about three, four weeks ago. Three, four weeks ago, you competed against how many people? Just one. Just one. Did you kick this person's ass or was it close? Unlike Matt, I got five out of five. You were like right on target. Oh, absolutely. It was not a problem for you. Sure. Right. And any years of the Howard Stern Show, you are very, very... Uh, uh, with it, you know about the NBC years. Absolutely. You know the Channel 9 years. You know Absolutely. it all. All yep. right. And it's said in your notes that you're such a super fan that you plan your vacations around the show's schedule. Yeah, I mean, it's been getting tougher and tougher. I mean, actually, with the 10 weeks, it's a little bit easier, you know, that sort right. of thing. But I, like I said, I, I haven't missed a show in probably about 15 years. Uh, I make, you know, uh, plans to tape it if, if I have to miss it. I have... My employees trained on how to tape the show on the stiletto, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Wow, that's case. fantastic. And you say you were the first in line at the uh, book signing for Robin. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Uh, among your other accomplishments, you had a small role in my movie Private Parts. I'm in the crowd scene. You were in the crowd scene, ACDC. Yep. Uh, you also say that you are married for 18 years. Yes. And you have three kids. So you're not some Absolutely. kook. You own no, no, a business. No. Oh, yeah, he's a working man. To make that man. point, everyone tries to point out that we are some sort of fringe show where normal people can't listen to us. You seem very normal, right, Steve? Well, looks can be deceiving. All right. Steve, uh, thank you. And I wish you a lot of luck. Thanks. Thank you. Now, Gina, you have been listening to the show since the NBC days, like you said. Yep. You listen almost every day. And your favorite person on the show is who? Fred. Fred. Matt, who's your favorite person on the show? I'd have to say Artie with Benji a close second. Benji, oh, Benji. I like ben I, I like all the stuff Benji does, like screaming, like in with the scream rally. I think that's hilarious. Uh, yeah. Do, do you think there should be more Benji? I do. Benji is I love that. You love that. This should this got more Benji stuff. I mean, send him out on the street every day to mess with people. Oh, the, I think Benji has slowed down. He's yeah. not doing as much. Benji's hard to motivate. I'll be honest with you. You guys uh, own businesses. You know what that's like. Uh, very, very difficult. It's all that salad he eats. Steve, yeah. what I about you? I saw his trough when he walked out. Uh, Gina, Gina uh, has her favorite. Who is your favorite? Fred. Fred. Why I, Fred? First off, he's so talented, and I just think he's so adorable. I wish he'd stand up so I could see him. Fred, stand up so Gina can look. Oh, there we look go. at that. Yeah. Thank you, you Fred. Want to change your, your mind, fa Matt? Steve, who's your favorite on the show? I I'd have to go with Artie and Richard Christie. Hey. And Richard Christie. Hey. Hey. All right. That's good. All right. Uh, you go to the Killers of Comedy shows, yes, Gina? Yes, I do. You've met Beetlejuice. Many, many, many times. What was that like? Uh, as you know, on Howard TV right now, the Beetlejuice reality show is in full swing. We're on episode number four. It's awesome. getting very, very high ratings for us. It's awesome. Yes. It's definitely awesome. What was it like when you met Beetlejuice? Uh, oh, I've known Beetle for years. He's just, he's such a sweetheart. Is that a big deal to a super fan to attach yourself to a whack packer where they get I, to know you? I don't know you? if I, you know, I'm... It's become a little bit more than that. Like, he knows me when he sees me. Right. You know, I mean, we, we you know, it's I'm friends with Bob Levy, so I kind of see them outside of that whole realm right. of comedy shows, too. Do you feel that uh, you are um, a bigger super fan than Matt and Steve just based on your associations with, let's say, Bob Levy or Beetlejuice because you have personal relationships with well, people from the show? Well, also because I live close by and I get to go to a lot of... I was at Beetle Bash last, a couple of weeks ago. Oh, you were at Beetle Bash. I was at Beetle Bash. I mean, you know, I've been to a lot of... Uh, uh, and how did you do when you were on Super Fan Roundtable? Did you, how many weeks ago were you on? I was on two weeks ago. And how did you do? Did you just trounce your competition? I think I did real well. Yeah, and did you get all five questions right? I think I got four out of five. All right, that's I not bad. I Steve, one. Steve, you got five out of five. Matt, you didn't do as well. I think I got three out of five. All right, well. Steve I, sounds tough, I'll tell you. Yeah, Steve looks awfully confident, Gina. Are you most worried about Steve in this competition? I'm not worried about anybody. All right. I'm, uh, the, by I'm the, way, the young buck in this thing. Yeah. Both the older. All right. It's time to play. It's time to find out who's going to win the $5,000 and who has the bragging right to say they are the number one super fan in the country of the Howard Stern Show. Let me tell you how this is going to work. 
I'm going to ask you a question. You write down your answer. When I uh, say put your pens down, you must put your pens down. And then I'm going to ask you for your answer. We're going to start out with some easy questions. They're each worth five points. These should be no problem for any super fan, Robin. All right. Now, for the average guy sitting at home, these might be a problem. But not if you're a super fan. Come on. These are tough questions? All right. These are, these are um, easy questions for the super fans. Okay. Steve's got an advantage over me. He's only missed one or two shows. I've missed a bunch. <laughs> That's right. Hardy's missed more shows than you. All right. Thanks Here we go. We're going to start with an easy one. It concerns Robin. What is Robin Quiver's? middle name. Now, if you're a super fan, this is nothing. Uh, everyone is writing quickly. Matt looks like he's scribbling and then crossing out. He's drawing a little bit of a blank. I'm having a spelling problem. Uh, don't worry about spelling so much. You don't have to spell it right, as long as we get the idea. Steve's pen is down. Gina's pen was immediately down. Uh, Matt's pen is now down. All right, let's go to Matt first for five points. Matt, what do you have? Ophelia. Ophelia is correct. Let's go to Steve. Steve, what do you have? Ophelia. Ophelia is right. And Gina, what do you have? Ophelia. Ophelia is correct. Everyone All has right. five points. Everybody on the board. All right, here's another easy one. How many children does Howard have? This is only for five points. It's an easy one. How many children does Howard have? All right, let's go to... Uh, oh, Steve's still writing. All right, Steve. I, I get a feeling Steve is bragging by actually writing the kids' right, names down. Right, I think so. I think that's what's going on. All right. Gina, what was the answer? Three. Three is correct. Steve, what was that you were scribbling down? Three. Deborah, Emily, and Ashley. That is correct. And what do you say there, Matt? Three. Three is correct. Okay, everyone has five points. Oh, radio. Now, wouldn't it be funny if the next question is, what are their names? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you something. I mean, to know all three names is pretty good. In fact, uh, you, you spelled Deborah wrong. It's D-E-B-R-A, but that was pretty good. You said spelling doesn't count. It does not. <laughs> okay, here we go. For a short period of time, Ivy Supersonic dated which member of the show? Now, again, this is very easy, Robin. Very easy. That's five. I'm, the five pointers. I'm surprised by the ease of these questions. All right, I'm going to go to Steve first. Steve, what do you have? Benji Bronx. That is correct. Let's go to Gina. Benji. Five points. Benji. Five points for Matt. There you go. And Steve is such a super fan, he wrote down Ivy's uh, cell phone number, <laughs> which is pretty incredible. All right, and one more easy one, just to show people how good you guys are. Here we go. Who from the staff once claimed to have received blowjobs from over 80 women? Someone on our staff received over 80 blowjobs. Well, he actually didn't receive them. He claims he, he claimed. received them. We don't know what happened. All right. Everyone is putting their pens down. Let's go to Matt first. Matt, who did you say? John Hines. John Hines is correct. Five points, Steve. John Hines. That's right. And Gina. John Hines. John Hines for another five points. Well, Everybody's so on the board with John Everybody's Spine. perfect. Everyone is perfect, but let's move on to the 10-point questions. This is exciting. This is Super Fan Trivia Contest. <laughs> All right. That was great. I Fred some genius, huh? All right, here we go. These are for 10 points. They get a little bit harder. Let's see how you all do. What breed of dog is Howard's dog Java? Mm. All right, let's... Uh, what breed is Howard's dog Java? As you can hear by this music, Robin, it gets a little more intense. Yes, yes. The intensity of the music indicates the harder question. That the ante has been upped. The ante has been upped. <laughs> All right, let's go to Gina first. Gina, uh, I had a dog named... Now, this is kind of a tricky question because everyone knows I have a, uh, another dog. Yes. But what kind of dog was Java? A lab. A lab is correct. Let's go to Steve. What does it say? Golden Retriever. Golden oh. Retriever is wrong, Steve. And let's go to Matt. Yellow Lab. R Yellow well, Lab is, is wrong. wrong. It was a black oh, lab. Oh, come on. I, put I could have just put lab. No, the yeah. judges, you put the color. I think the judges say it's wrong. It's yeah. wrong. You should have just said lab. Keep things vague. <laughs> Matt. That's that sucks. Sucks. Well, now um, we have someone in the lead. Gina, you're in the lead now by 10 points with 30. The boys both have 20. Steve, what went wrong there? Brain fart. I mean, come on. I talked about that dog for years, Matt. Come on. That's I, after, uh, I took a shot in the dock. I shouldn't have written the yellow, though. All right. Here we go. <laughs> this is going to get harder. It ain't going to be easy. Which web 
temptress, temptress, which web temptress did JD ask to have her dog eat pe- peanut butter out of her pussy? Oh boy! Wow. Let me repeat that because yeah. I, even I had problems <laughs> you with that. You butchered that. Which web temptress did JD ask to have her dog eat peanut butter out of her pussy? In other words, JD was on the air and he was into this, going to these websites. And he would ask women to do disgusting things, and we found out he was asking women to put peanut butter in their pussy. And have a dog eat it out? Right. It was really weird, and this was not on the air when he did this. He would ask women to do disgusting things like possibly fuck them. All right, let's go to Gina first. Gina, what do you have for us? Pussy fur. Pussy fur is wrong. Uh, Let's go. That still leaves you in the lead, though, with 30 points. Steve, do you want to tie this up? That would be kissy fur. Kissy fur is correct. (laughs) Wow, close one, Gina. Matt, come on, get in there. Put cookie puss. Cookie puss. <laughs> right. Cookie puss. Uh, yeah. I don't know where that came from, but. All right, let's get you guys on the board. Matt, you have 20. Steve and Gina tied with 30. Ooh. Very impressive game. So much more, and we're not even at the big top categories for the real hard 25-point questions. So let's start with another 10-pointer. Double A stands for what? Double A stands for what? Matt is scribbling. Steve was very quick on the gun. Gina, very confident on this one. I can tell Robin by the way they're writing their answers. Double A. You've heard him on the show. All right, I'm going to go to... He's a super fan. I'm going to go to Matt first. What does double A stand for, Matt? Awesome Angelo. That's 10 points. Let's go right to Steve. Awesome Angelo. Awesome Angelo is correct. And Gina? Awesome Angelo. Awesome Angelo is correct. Isn't that impressive? (laughs) <laughs> well, you all have interesting scores. Gina and Steve in a dead heat at 40, and Matt has 30. Who is going to win this, Robin? Who is the well, super fan? Well, it's still anybody's game. It's anybody's game is correct. Let's go to Matt. Matt, what do you think of the super fan so far? Uh, well, I think that they're older than me, and they've lived in the New York area longer. I don't is know, that I mean, why you're behind? I'm the underdog here, All I guess. All right. Steve, is he just whining a lot? Wah. I <laughs> missed the point. <laughs> Gina, are you feeling more confident now that you're tied for the lead? Uh, are you relaxing? I'm relaxing. Yeah. All right. Matt, on the phone, what do you think of these super fans? Hey, uh, I got to tell you what. This is the most intelligent group of people I've I've heard on your show in a long time, Howard. Really? I I give it up to Mutt, man. He picked some people that are pretty awesome. Yes, you Mutt, guys are, uh... Mutt did a, a very intensive screening of these people, and uh, he did a very, very good job. Let's get back to the game. We have one more 10-point question for you, and then we're going to get to the 25-pointers. This is to find out who listens to the show, who is the... Biggest super fan. Guess that last guy didn't hear the Francis Ford Coppola interview. <laughs> Which current staff member once got a call from Howard when he was in the hospital with cancer as a kid? Believe it or not, one of our staff members got a call from me. He was a child. He had written me a letter, and I responded to it. Wow, you guys didn't take any time on that one. Which current staff member once got a call from Howard when he was in the hospital with cancer as a kid? I'm going to go to Steve first. Steve, what do you have? Will, or young Will. Will is right. Uh, Let's go to Gina. Will. Will is correct, Matt. Will Murray. Will Murray is even more correct. Wow. Robin, come on. Give it to the super fan. I got to say, they are on their game. Okay. Now it gets down to 25 points, and we're finally going to have a winner. This is Matt a is big hard. question. We're talking about a $5,000 prize for the Super Fan Trivia Contest provided by Bex Beer. Bex, our good friends, give us $5,000 to present it to. Present to someone, Bex Beer, discover the taste. And now the real men get separated from the boys. Uh-uh. Sorry, Gina. That's okay. You know what I mean. Matt, Steve, and Gina, you've come this far. It's anybody's ball game. Matt, you're only behind by 10 points. Matt from Boston. Haverhill. Whatever. <laughs> Steve and Gina. Close enough. Tied with 50 points. It's anybody's game. Here we go. I'm going to really test your knowledge now with some difficult ones. What year was Butt Bongo Fiesta released? Wow. It was one of those best selling videos. We did a pay per view special around it as well. It was a number one pay per view special. It was a number one video. What year was Butt Bongo Fiesta released? If you don't know, it always pays to guess because you're not penalized for getting the wrong answer in this game. 
I see. Gina very confident, Steve shaking his head, annoyed with the question, Matt shaking his head, just ready to vomit. And I'm going to ask you to put your pens down. All right, let's go to Steve first. Steve, you're shaking your head. D- dates are my week. I put 96. 96 is wrong. I'm sorry you're not uh, getting that one. Gina, do you know? Uh, dates are week too, but I think it was 89. 89 is not correct. Let's go to Matt. Matt, did you get this one? 1990. 1990 was off by two years. Oh, 1992. I said 92. That was a tough one. Damn. All right. Here we go. What celebrity was Howard and the crew talking about when the news of the attacks on the World Trade Center broke? It was a very big day in the show's history. I stayed on way too long. That's how I remember 9-11. I listened to you that entire day. I was in college. Well, then you should have no problem with this, young man. (laughs) Matt, Steve, and Gina are all done. They have their pens down. All right. Turn off the creepy music, Fred, and let's find out who uh, got this right. Gina... What celebrity was Howard talking to, talking about, rather, when the news of the attacks hit? Who is it? Pam Anderson. Pam Anderson is correct. Let's go right to Steve. Pam Anderson. Pam Anderson, 25 points. Matt? Pam Anderson. Pam Anderson it is. Okay. Pamela Anderson. Pamela Anderson. Nicholas Gage. Matt's uh, got 65 points. Uh, Steve's got 75. And Gina, got, you've got 75. It's a tie, uh, a tie score. And you're only behind by 10, Matt. You've got to pick up one 25-pointer. I should have got that Butt Bongo Fiesta one. That sucks. You were pretty close on that one. All right, here we go. This one's tough. I don't say they're easy. On what late-night TV show did Howard's mom make a surprise appearance? I went on a TV show. My mother showed up sitting there paneling. Oh, I'm on TV. I'll take credit for Howard's career. I don't even remember that. Um, what late night TV show did Howard's mom make a surprise appearance? All the pens are down, Robin. While you are not a super fan, Robin, <laughs> these guys are. All right, we're going to go to Matt first. Matt, what's the answer? 25 points. Letterman. Letterman is wrong. Let's go to Gina. David Brenner. Is correct for 25 points. Wow. And let's get right over to Steve. What did you say? David Brenner. David Brenner is correct. This is some game. Matt, that you're falling be behind. That a death knell for Matt. That might be wow. the swan song for Matt behind 35 points. Matt, what happened there? I was uh, like probably seven years old when that no happened. No excuse. <laughs> Steve and Gina, you are tied at 100 points. Steve, Gina's a little tougher than you thought. Absolutely, absolutely. Gina, can you believe you're in it to win it? Yes. All right, let's get on with it. These don't get any easier, these 25-point questions. Test who is really a super fan and who is not. Matt. (laughs) Matt, wait outside for us. Matt. Matt. Matt, can you clean all your shoes? You never know what can happen. All right, come on. Hang in there, pal. Your Get wicked tough. bad. <laughs> wicked pisser. <laughs> Yo, wicked pisser. <laughs> okay, here we go for 25 points. Howard and his wife, Beth, first had sex on whose bed? Oh. I should actually say she was my girlfriend when we first had sex. We did not save ourselves for marriage. Howard and Beth yeah, first Yeah, because that would be a different answer. Howard and Beth first had sex on whose bed? Steve thinking about it. Gina's still writing. Matt, okay, everyone's done. Uh-oh. What's going to happen All right, now? let's go to Steve. Steve, what did you have there? Dominic and Nicka Barbara. Dominic oh. Barbara is correct for 25 points. Gina, what did you say? Dominic Barbara. That is correct, Matt. Oh. That's Dominic right, Barbara. Dominic Barbara. Nice. Matt, you're in it. Matt. Okay. Is that a good one? Nice. Very Nice. Real pizza. Very nice. All right, here we go. Tough one. I think this is a real hard one. You only have two more questions left, and then I don't know what I'm going to do. I can't break this tie. <laughs> two more questions left. Here's a 25-point question. Matt, you need to get this one right, or else you're going to really fall far behind. Steve and Gina, no problem. You're tied. Ronnie Mund, Ronnie the limo driver Mund, has a tattoo of his departed dog on his arm. What is that dog's name? He said it maybe three or four times on the air, not often. Only a true super fan pays attention. Matt is shaking his head angry. Steve is sweating. And Gina hasn't scribbled a thing. Matt is done. He's got that look like I've got this one wrong. Gina's now writing. Gina is writing. Ronnie Mund has a tattoo of his departed dog on his arm. What's the dog's name? This separates the true super fans from the fans. I think if I get this wrong, I'm mathematically eliminated. 
Matt is thinking. Steve is still thinking. Gina is thinking. I'm giving them extra time. Robin is looking at photos of her boyfriend. I'm not. I'm looking at the super fans and, and wondering when people are going to start writing or stop writing and put their pen down. All right. Gina's shaking her head. I'm going to go to you first, Gina. Steve, put your pen down if you would. Uh, Gina, what do you have for us? Mike Weiser. Mike Weiser is not the name of Ronnie's no, daughter. No, he's a super fan of yours who passed away this week. Aww. Very nice of you to mention him and Mike, uh, our condolences, but wherever you are. All right, Steve, what do you say? I went with Mocha trying to go with the job. Yeah, Mocha is not right. Uh, what is it? What is the name, Matt? I took Lonnie. a chance that he named his dog after Lonnie from... <laughs> Good guess. You know, I always thought it was a great name for a dog. The dog is Bots, which is Italian, wow. which is Italian for crazy. Bots. All right, nobody got that, so no harm, no foul. The score? The score is as follows, Matt. You are behind. You have 90 points. Normally, that would be good, but your two competitors, Steve and Gina, are tied at 125 points. I can't win. Not with one question. Not with one question. When you look to the left, just think Aaron Boone and Bucky Dent. (laughs) Uh, I'll think of 2004. It makes me sleep better at night. (laughs) You have to be very exact on this last question, because this could be the whole enchilada. And Steve and Gina, this is tough. And you got to be precise. What is Vinny Favalli's official job title? Oh, dear. What is Vinny Favalli's official job title? Now, I'm going to be a little bit lenient on this, but not much. Really think it through. What is Vinny Favalli's official job title? Now, if you're a super fan, you would, of course, know who Vinny Favalli is. But do you know his title? If you were a casual fan, you might not even know who that is. Tiny cherub is. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Matt laughing. Knows he's out of it, but still playing along like a true super fan. Just happy to be here, Howard. Right. That's the attitude of a loser. Steve? <laughs> All right. Gina, you done? All right. Here we go. Let's go to Matt first. He can't technically win, but no. he's still playing, and I admire I that. I put head of public relations. That's oh, why no. you're not winning. No, 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 no. no. Unbelievably wrong. All right, Steve, you're tied for the lead. This could be it. Let's see what you've got. Let's analyze it. Director of Late Night Programming East Coast. Director of Programming Late Night... Uh, director of Late Night Programming East Coast. Do you sa- accept that? Howard, uh, there's, there's two things missing from it that are yeah, very important. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can I say what it is? I yes. Can put, I, can, okay. I can write it down real quick if you want. <laughs> well, we have to accept that answer. It's, uh, the two things that are missing are CBS yes. and vice president. Vice president. Yeah, right. it's CBS mm. vice president of late night programming East Coast. I Not think, director. Not yeah, it's, it's uh, been said you many said times. You said be precise. Let me check with the two judges in there. The two uh, yentas, uh, Gary Delabate and John Hine. Guys, what do you think? Can what? I give them that one or not? I don't think you can give it to him. Come All on, right. John. Yeah. You said be precise. I if, he, if he would have said any of those words in the wrong order, I'd give it to him. Gina, let's see what you have. Executive Vice President of Late Night Programming. Ooh. Missing CBS. She's missing East Coast. East Coast, East Coast is crucial. Yeah, if, I, if I saw East Coast or CBS, I'd give it to you, Gina, right. but I can't. It's, it's crucial. It's it's crucial. Officially, you get it. CBS Vice President of Late Night Programming, East Coast. Because West Coast would mean something. Yes. <laughs> well, I do need a tiebreaker here. You got anything else? All there? right. Okay. I'm going to whip out one that uh, I think should be a tiebreaker. I hope this is it because I'm running out of questions, Robin. I'm embarrassed to say. But okay, here we go for a tiebreaker. And to figure out who gets the five thousand dollars from Bex, and who really is the king of all super fans, you, whose name we will hail if you win, it's either Steve or Gina, truly of all time. Here we go, Matt. Play along because we love to hear your accent <laughs> from Haverhill. Okay, here we go. What movie did Howard and his ex-wife Allison see on their first date? I've mentioned this in my books. I've mentioned it many times. <laughs> I just read in Private Parts. I can't think of it. Matt, calm down and think. That's why uh, you uh, run into trouble. And in fact, because this is a tiebreaker situation, you could at least redeem yourself with this one. My ex-wife is from Haverhill. Family from Haverhill. You should yeah, know this. I do know that. All right. But that's not what we need from you. Let's get this one going. What movie did Howard and his ex-wife Allison see on their first date? think about it, I've said it a couple of times on the air, and I wrote about it in private parts. Any true super fan would use that as their Bible. All right, 
Put down your pens and let's go to Gina, who is nodding her head. What did you have? I don't have anything, Howard. I, and I just reread private parts. Not too, even again. Yeah. All right. Sorry, Gina. Steve, what do you have? Come on. Stab in the dark. Rosemary's baby. Not right, but a good guess. Pays to guess. What do you have, Matt? I put Butch Cassidy in the sun. And then uh-huh. I wrote a little note to Emily. I love you, Emily and Jacoby. All right. Robin, you know the answer to this, don't you? I do not. It's my baby. I know. Go ahead, Fred. Lenny. Lenny, yes. The movie Lenny Bruce. Uh, Benji knew it too. Starring Dutton Hoffman. Yeah, that's Dutton Hoffman. And Valerie Perrine. Valerie Perrine. He don't really know. <laughs> that would have right, been a good opportunity. Mega cheese. Mega, mega cheese, cheese, Jamie. Mega cheese, Jamie. <laughs> you still have a tie. We still have a tie, so I'm going to go to another tiebreaker. We might be here all year. <laughs> Well, that's one way to keep us from going on vacations. <laughs> we never get out of this game. Okay, I'm giving you another tiebreaker. Super fans, put on your thinking caps. What Tom Cruise movie did Kenneth Keith Kallenbach have a scene in before it was cut? Kenneth Keith Kallenbach recently died. We miss him. He was a big fan of the show himself. I don't Contacted think this is going to be a tiebreaker. And, uh... Got on to have his sort of fame in his areas and died in prison, actually. But uh, what Tom Cruise movie did Kenneth Keith Kallenbach have a scene in before it was cut? Uh, the super fans of Ronnie. Steve is the last one to put his pen down. I'm going to go to uh, Matt first. Oh. Matt, go ahead. I said Rain Man. I said Rain Man. Rain Man know. is not correct. Right. Uh, Steve, go ahead. I originally wrote Jerry Maguire, but I believe it was Vanilla Sky. Vanilla Sky is not correct. <laughs> uh, let's go to uh, Gina. Gina? Jerry Maguire. That is correct. Yeah. You screwed yourself, oh, 25 points. You are a super fan extraordinaire. Wow. <laughs> well, Steve and Gina are making out. Matt shaking hands. Howard. Steve, I thought you had that Steve, one. You had I did it. have it. I what went it wrong? Out. You crossed I, out I, the I, right answer. Yeah. You had Jerry Maguire. Why did you cross it out? I, I just, uh, I, I knew that was Artie's movie. That's too. the same one I got exactly. cut out of. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but it was the two of them Mama together. Musa. Steve, you didn't make it. Matt, you didn't make well, as it. As Artie oh, always so says, close. the year I was born was the year Steve got his first DUI. So. <laughs> Whoa. We hail Gina. Oh, my yes. God. I can't believe I won. Very beautiful Gina who hangs around with Beetlejuice and Bob Levy. She hangs out with all the whack packers. Gina, what's your last name? Wasik. Wasik. W A S I K. Steve, what's your last name? You did well. Ashoni. Ashoni and Matt, what's yours? Ryan. Ryan. Well, Gina, you oh. are a winner. Congratulations. Thank you. $5,000. Now to present your check is a gentleman I hail who makes the greatest beer of all time. You want to see a genius? Here's a man who follows the laws not of the United mm. States, but of Reinheinskabot, <laughs> the laws that govern beer purity of 1516. We're talking about a man, a true hero among men, from Bex. To present your check is Bob Davis. Hi, Bob. How are you, Howard? I don't I think love... he actually makes the beer. Do you, uh, no German accent, nothing. Not today. Shame on you. Uh, Bob, uh, how do you make such a great beer, and uh, why don't the other beers follow Reinheinz Gebot? What, what's wrong with them? Well, they don't have, they don't have the, the support of uh, the Howard Stern Show, so that's what keeps Bex as the number one imported German beer. So we, we love it. Our we love here. it. And uh, what can you tell Gina? Can you give her some good news from Bex? Gina, congratulations. Thank you. The three super fans here, and you are the super super fan. And we have $5,000 here to yes, present you is. as the super fan. Thank you very much. Gina, how will this money be used so Bex can uh, get back to their corporate uh, offices? and uh, Pay, bills. Uh, pay bills. Pay bills. You're a little behind right now. Uh, i got some insurance nightmares going on. Do you enjoy Bex? I love Bex. Uh, that's the spirit. Well, uh, thank you so much, Bob. you got to be proud of these three contestants, and we thank you for uh, providing us with the $5,000. Can I get a 12-pack of content? Consolation prize. <laughs> come on, come on down to the party tonight. We'll take care of all of you. Nope. What's the big Thank party? You. What do we got? You guys are uh, the super fan uh, show is going to be at uh, Sutton Place tonight, and ah! you are going to be there absolutely with the beer and everything. We will, we will have some sampling available. Oh, well, there you go. Right, Second Avenue, yeah, it's a cool place. How uh, far from here is that? I, that's surprising. Artie's been there. Uh, you want directions? <laughs> no, no, I can give you directions after the show. Right. I'll tell you what, for uh, Steve and Matt, because you guys are good sports, and uh, you know, listen, Gina got the big prize from Bex. I'll give you some uh, a, a lower cash amount if you would like. I'm going to give you each five hundred dollars cash and a five hundred dollars Steve. 
Steven Singer gift card courtesy of Steven Singer Thank Jewelers. you, Howard. That's Thank awesome. You, Howard. Visit nice. IHateStevenSinger.com. And if anybody needs to see me, I'll be jumping out of any window I can find. For uh, the next it was years. a big deal to lose this. Yeah, huh? Steve, oh. I really my thought pride, you had My it. pride more than any. Gina, you were nervous going in. You were afraid of Steve admitted, and now... Oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, I, I've been very, very nervous, and, you know, I've got to thank Mutt. I mean, he's had me on the round table a lot. My husband, Joe. You know what I like, Gina? You know, everyone always thinks of the Howard Stern Show. Oh, it's all guys always listening. The true super fans are guys, guys, guys. Gina, you've proved them all wrong. Not I her. like that a woman won. What do you think, Bob? I think it's great. Thank great, you. Great There's not a whole lot of us out there, but we, we're a strong... Uh, we're a strong little group. And yeah. Gina is as pure as Ryan Heinz Kaboot itself. She uh, practices the sexual purity laws. <laughs> She's a smart, sophisticated broad. That's right. Thank I'm very, you, Very, very, very proud to see that you are a super fan. And you guys did very well. As, uh, you know, and, and you have nothing to be ashamed of. Howard, thank you so much. This is a dream come true. Please resign. Please thank resign. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. And Steve, thank you. Thank you, Howard. And Gina, thank you from Super Fan Trivia Contest. Thank Extraordinary. you all. Uh, Gina, you have the bragging rights, and you are the greatest fan of all time. Thank you, Howard. And Bob, you are a great sponsor. And now I say farewell from Superfan Trivia Contest. Hey, I'm the guy that screwed everything. Steve, nice to meet you. Oh. Steve, what happened, dude? Oh, I had it. Oh, oh my God, the pride, the pride that I am. Yeah, go laugh, go laugh over there, Gina. <laughs> Oh my God, I had it, I wrote it down, and like I said, I just can't believe what I just did. I can't, you know, you always go with your first answer, and oh my God, I just, there, I, there's no words to describe what an idiot I am right now, so. What's up? What's going wrong, man? Well, I mean, I'm 15 years younger than these guys. I mean, I'm from Boston. He was only on in Boston from 94, but no excuses. I don't know. I just, I choked kind of. I didn't, I didn't know some of them. I was, I was like seven years old for some of those questions. So what are you going to do? Yeah, I, 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 if, if I had any reason, that would be the reason, you know, but dream come true to come up here. People have paid a couple hundred thousand dollars to sit in the studio, so just the experience is great, and Howard was nice to give the $500 con consolation prize. So, awesome, awesome, awesome. You guys have been awesome. Gina, come here, come here. Congratulations. Thank you all. Hi, Lisa. I love you. So, You're the best. You. Thank you. It's about you. So, were you, were you shocked? I'm shocked that I won. I was so nervous. I was so nervous. I mean, I've been nervous for two weeks. I've, you know, I knew my stuff, but, you know, reading private parts again and all of that, and it's just, it's nerve-wracking. What did you think of the questions? The questions were hard. I mean, the first few were, were easy, but believe me, those questions were very difficult at the end. The tiebreaker was... He well, had it. Those last couple of questions. He had it. Guys, yeah. Uh, yeah. Either both okay. knew it or both didn't. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, it was, they end. were. They were